Hello everybody and welcome back to the KCM. It's time for week number 8, season 2 of 2024. We're starting things off with Sulky versus Bisu here. Game number 1. Let's get it started. Bringing up the lineup on screen here, we've got Royal, Sharp, Rush, Snow, Bisu, Stork, Sulky, Hero, Shine. Should be a really fun week. I am here with Ozzy Dahaki today because Shun... Once again, not present for us. Ozzy going to be filling in here. How you doing, Ozzy? I'm doing pretty good today, man. How you doing today? Doing all right, dude. Week eight. Um, we're getting right down to the wire here. Very, very close in the point rankings between Terran and Protoss. But if uh, Terran doesn't take a win and Protoss take a loss, Going down third, um, we're going to go to a Terran versus Zerg semifinals. I think that's almost guaranteed now. Yeah, nice. I'm uh, I'm just really looking forward to these games and, and seeing kind of high quality like uh, matchups here because I, I've been learning a lot of PVT or PVZ specifically and then playing a lot of Terran lately. So this will actually be really good for me to see like the best of the best playing these matchups. Uh, how familiar are you with uh, PVZ? Because I know you were a Protoss player before. Yeah, this is actually my most comfortable matchup right now. So I should be able to have a little bit of a potential insight here watching the games. Well, look at this. We've got a nine pool from Soul Key, and he canceled the gas. Starts an Overlord and an extra drone here going up to 10. He's going to be putting on some pressure with the early forge, though. Looks like Beast is going to be okay. And the scout here. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised to see a nine pool in a two player map, right? Because you're guaranteed to get scouted early, so it's pretty easy for Protoss to respond correctly. I, I feel like, so I'm curious where Soul Key plans on taking it from here. Well, he's going to build at least four to six links. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Bisu should throw down double cannon here, or do you just do one cannon in this circumstance? Uh, you can do one cannon and then just pull your pose if you need to. If you're like really worried about it, you can go two cannon, but that's really only if it's six lings. Um, for four lings, you'll never need a second cannon. Oh, there's the six lings. But it is lings. Gonna be six lings, yeah. So we'll see how he responds here. He he sees the ling count. He might go for like a gateway instead and try to plug it with probes. Oh, well, we did so we'll, see, we'll see how you, yeah. two cannons there at the front. Okay. Yeah, we are right. It is two cannons. He uh, uh, wants to be safe. Positioning the cannon worries me a little bit because he might get sneak in on the right side still because that far left cannon might not fire very much. Looks like Soul Key sees the, the two cannons there with the Overlord and decides to chase the probe instead. Not going to try to sneak by. Um, although, yeah, you're right, there was a lot of space there on the right-hand side, but Sulky just going to focus on getting this third hatch out. And another drone heading around the side. Is he actually going to try to start hopping lings over this he back mine out, yeah. mineral? Uh, it really he, seems he, even like made it, he even made a couple extra lings, which is very interesting to me. Yeah, um, the, there seems like no reason to build those extra lings, right? Unless you're going to do something yeah. like this with it. Running past the two cannons is just not a possibility. Now, doing this with one drone does take a really long time and a lot of focus. So, if Bisu, like, sniffs this out early, he's going to have a really, really long time. Oh, is he going to hop them? Oh, interesting. He's not going to mine it out. No, he's going to hop them over one by one, just like you would with a, a vulture and an SCV, but... This is very tough. He gets two over already. Um, is he going to try and do every single one of them? Or is he just going to, you know, go with two or three? Looks like he's going to go with two here right now. Um, this is going to get really complicated, the micro for Solki here in a moment. He's actually supply blocked right now. Can't really build anything. Um, already taxing him here with the multitasking. Yeah, I mean, we even almost lost a drone to the pro, right? Uh, this is so much to do, like trying to hop links, and he only ends up getting two over, and then he kind of gives up on it, it looks like, because it's just taking too much focus, and he's floating, you know, 400 minerals in the, like while he was going for it. Yeah, it's just, just a little bit too much. He's going to try and get a few kills here in the main. He's already gotten one probe. He might be able to get a couple more, but the Zealot chasing here. Uh, eventually going to track this down as more pressure comes out. Beast is sending a Zealot across the map. He realizes right now that 
Sulky is juggling a lot of different things and trying to catch up an economy. Maybe he can, you know, sneak that Zealot across and deal some damage. Finishes off one of the Lings. That last Ling, not going to be able to do too much unless it dances around in the main for a lo really long time and gains back some of that HP. Yeah, some of the good news for Sulky, I guess, it is only one Zealot, and he, he doesn't have to make any extra Lings for one Zealot since he already had the six that were done. Um, so it's going to be able to clean this up without too much of a problem. Going to lose a few Lings here tucked in, but doesn't lose any drones or anything. Does get like one drone interrupted from mining temporarily, but it's not too bad. Although the Zealot got four kills. Not too bad. <laughs> Pretty annoying there for Solki to deal with the Zell behind the mineral patch, but Bisu making the most out of that unit and only two lings left. Is he going to put on more pressure here? Looks like he think he's thinking about sending out these zealots. There's actually no overlord here. The overlord sent all the way back home because this is a hydra defense for Solki. He needs to bring all the overlords together, make sure that he doesn't lose any uh, to this earlier Corsair. Uh, but I don't think this is going to be a Hydra bust from him. This is just the Hydralist defense against the Corsair. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Because he, he's just continuing to make drone behind that. He just made a few Hydra to deflect this Corsair and then back into drones. Uh, we also have the Lair, so he's not going to commit really hard to Hydra at that point. So maybe looking to turn this into a Lurker Contain, which is very strong on this map. You you can contain a Protoss on three base relatively easily if you want to do that. Yeah, those bridges are very hard to cross once the Lurker Contain gets up. Mm -hmm. um, there's, of course, the the way out of the main base as well. You could go around that direction. Um, or you could go around the right-hand side here, but I, I like what you're thinking. I like where your head's at. I'm sure that you've been Lurker Contained on this map before, right, Ozzy? <laughs> many, many times. It's exactly what I'm talking about is from experience. Uh, the only thing is, like, Kind of like you mentioned, it's something that a lot of Protoss players don't think to do, is when you're getting Lurker thing, is, is using that exit on the back side of your main base like you're talking about. And it actually forces Zerg to try and contain at three spots. And when you're stretching them that thin, even though the pathways are pretty hard to get across, it, it can make it really hard for Zerg to contain. Yeah, it is also difficult, though, to bring your army through your main base and all the yeah. way around there to, to get to that area as a Protoss as well. But... Um, opening up any extra paths that need to be defended is very strong against any sort of contain. Drop play can be really, really good as well, but we're not quite there yet. Solki right now just still droning up, uh, defending with the minimum, the bare minimum here. Starting to add on more Hydras now, but you know, just these Lings out here sharking around looking for some kills. Great kill there. Nice surround on that one Zealot that uh, randomly decided to walk on that... Uh, different path there going across the bridge when you shouldn't have and now coming in with a big host of zealots can he actually do anything against this number of hydras it looks like not and the lings are going to catch from behind as well this is a great sandwich play by sulk he's going to get a little more damage here than uh, he would have had he just brought the hydralis forward Mm -hmm. Luckily, well not luckily, but Bisu did have the plus one at least, so he did manage to kind of eat through the lings a little bit quickly so it doesn't get caught out too badly. But yeah, blood off a few zealots. Gonna force some extra cannons here now, um, because the Hydra count is kind of scary at the moment. Yeah, it's pre that nine minute storm timing. Uh, DT is gonna pop out though, and with the DT here, I think you should hold no problem. You cannot push through. Oh, wait, we do have Overlord speed. So that early layer uh, really coming in clutch here. The Overlord speed coming in just in time to help uh, clear this DT. And now it is a bit of pressure here on Bisu. We don't have Storm just yet. Yeah, and at this point, uh, he's just going to keep pumping Hydra, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And he got a pretty good trade. He sh uh, you know, shaved off a few of those Zealots. Um, Storm, I guess, is probably almost done, though, so I don't think he's going to have enough time to get into Lurkers and contain them here. But just going to look to bust down this wall a little bit. Uh, but the Zealot count's pretty high, and we've got two Storms here, so... Bisu's not in any real danger, and as long as he pushes his back before Lurkers start coming in, then he's going to be in pretty good shape. Oh, and no reaction to the Storm actually kills several Hydra. Really, really good for Bisu. That was a great Storm, and look at the dismal drone count here at the third base. He's really... 
put a lot into the hydras here early on and he's starting to pump some of those drones out but i think we have to see lurkers here pretty soon um he's got to try something right now because uh, just purely building hydras and uh drones behind them you're just not going to have enough to deal with this huge gateway count that's about to come out. You need something extra, and building or throwing a lot of your minerals into drones um, means you have a lot of gas to, to work with. You can throw down a bunch of lurkers at the same time. That's generally how the economy works out or uh, kind of maths out here at this point in the game, but we just don't see any lurkers. He's going into Aspire instead, Ozzy. Yeah, he's going to make 10 mutas possibly, as I guess the game plan is going to look the snipe. The High Templar, it does actually make it harder for BC to move out right now because he doesn't have Muta. He doesn't really have anything against the Muta, right? We're, we're all Zealots, a couple Corsair, and just like two or three Templars, what we saw earlier. So the Muta at least does buy him time. But if he goes into Dark Archon or a few more Corsair or something like that, then it's going to be a little bit hard, especially if you're not making Lurkers. Yeah, this Corsair count really not very high. Another wave of drones come out. Is this too much? All that yeah, gas just little... disappeared, man. Where did it go? I think a bunch of mutas are about to pop. This is going to be a real finesse play from Solki to try and take down uh, Bisu in this game. Yeah, even mixing a few Scourge in here. But yeah, with only two Templar, our, our Storm count is so low. And if that gets cleaned up, okay, we got three more than natural, so it's not too bad. But definitely got to be a little bit careful. If we lose these Templar, then we could easily get overwhelmed by the Hydra coming in right after. Great dodge there on the oh, first Storm. I'm gonna fly into the main base here. Maybe try to bait the Corsairs to come and attack. Fight them with the Scourge. Wow, great splitting yeah, there. Pick. Fantastic wow. play from Soul Key to just snipe those two Corsairs. Now, his Mutalus reign supreme here in the sky, taking another base as well. Looks like he's not totally committed into diving on top of the Templar. Just kind of sharking around, looking for any free damage that he can get. Even baiting these storms out is actually really, really good. We're not killing Templar, but just, what is that, three storms now that have been thrown out without any Muta dying? So this is, like, really, really good already for Soul Key. Soul Key. But I was really impressed by those Scourge inside the flock being split into the Corsair like that. was really, really impressive looking. Yeah, very smooth play there from Soul Key. The Scourge are one of the dumbest units in the game. They're so hard to control, but he makes it look so good. A big army here for Bisu now. Doesn't have too many Templar, like you were saying, with that army, but he has quite a few in reserve. Setting up the Lurker contain now. It is going to be that three base contain you were talking about earlier, Ozzy. Yeah, and you, and you see this on the right side as well, setting up to kind of contain on this little alleyway here as well. And he's got an overlord position at the bottom side, it looks like, to see if he tries going around. So, yeah, I just see this place so often on this map, and even at the highest level, right? Just looking for lurker contains on three base, which can be hard because Protoss, like a, a Protoss on three gas, when it can make this many Dragoons with their storm, does get extremely difficult for Zerg to deal with on their tech. But we're actually moving forward across the bridges right now, which is crazy to me that's wild he's gonna take a position here right across the bridge big storms on some of these lurkers he's going after the observers right now with the overlord he's gonna get the over or the the the, the vision here of bisu and that's not a play you see very often uh the the snipes on the observers it's mostly going for templar uh, in general, but he's going to open up a position here where maybe he can push across this ramp and get over on top of the uh, rally point here. He has the Overlord forward. There's one Observer. Can he snipe it? He's going to go for it for sure, I think. No, he backs away from the storm. Nice dodge there. Coming in from multiple angles right now with his Hydras. A big storm on the left-hand side. But the Hydras here are going to push forward. Dragoon, just pure Dragoon versus pure Hydra is going to favor uh, Soul Key here right now. And even without big snipes on a lot of these Templar, he's managing to make it work with just pure Hydra coming forward again. Snipes the Observer. He doesn't have any more Lurkers, though, with this push. Yeah, this was a really crazy approach to this attack, going for the Observers with the Muta and not going for any high Templar snipes. And it kind of worked out but he's getting pushed back now like just a little bit the supply is getting a little bit better for bisu so if we can just kind of hang on and stabilize here we have no drones at the fourth base for for uh sulky yeah he hasn't saturated um, that at all he's really yeah, so, trying to break him here 
Yeah, if Bisu can just stabilize, like, he's going to be in a really, really good spot, I think. He is starting more cannons here. He's got a few Templar with this army. There's no lurkers to try and make this push stick. So, Solki here just relying on his splitting and spreading of these Hydras. He's going to go for snipes on some more of these Dragoons. He's lowered that count so far. Uh, but it just doesn't matter as much when there's no lurkers in the mix. Yeah, no lurkers and the Hydra counts getting dwindled, which makes the Zealots really, really strong in these, like, low army counts. Well, but the... actually remade Muta here. Yeah, the low Dragoon count makes Muta's uh, pretty strong. You can come in here and start to snipe Templar. Um, maybe go for the Observer snipes again? I'm not too sure. He's going to try and harass the economy once again. Picking off a few probes, baiting out some storms. Um, coming in once again across these bridges. Dude, he is so aggro with this army here. Coming across the bridge every time. It's kind of wild. He's going to go after the storm. The storms here. Getting two Templar. Very nice pickoffs there for Sulky, but is it going to be enough? I think that Bisu's kind of held here. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty good for Bisu, I think. Like, he's... He's going to have his upgrades kicking in. Um, I wish I could see what they are right now. But his upgrades are going to be kicking in. He's going to get. He's going to be able to get into that army composition he wants. And essentially, we're on three base Zerg versus three base Protoss, which most of you guys, I'm sure, already know. If you're even on bases as Protoss, you're usually really happy. Checking around for extra, ba extra bases here. Bisu sees that there's none uh, in the top right. He realizes kind of the position he's in and... He's going to be comfortable just sitting here on his side of the bridges, storming and, and trading with the uh, Big Zerg army over there. He's going to check the main base and see that there's no uh, hive on the way. Um, this is a great situation for Bisu. Uh, what can Solki do to try to bring this one back right now? Uh, man, I'm not sure. It's going to be really tough. He, he has to commit so much to trying to hold on the bridge right now. It means that pathway on the right side is open, which it, I think Bisu just sent his army up that way. Or maybe he's thinking about it. Yeah, there we go. And this is part of the issue, right? We've had some pretty good trading for Bisu. His economy is, like, pretty good versus Sulky's. So we're going to go up and around, and Sulky, I guess, is going to try and push across the bridge and look for a counterattack, which could be a decent play. Because part of the issue right now, like, look at the supply, right? And this is such a good composition for Bisu. Head on, it's going to be so hard for Soki to fight this. But it looks like Bisu's actually just going to go to a fourth base. Bisu going to grab and... a fourth base and coming across here, trying to get some snipes on Templar as they pop out and make their way to the rally point. Putting a bit of a wedge in between Bisu's. Uh, natural base and his third is a pain here for Bisu, but he can swing back around as the cannons finish at the fourth base, or he, he's actually going to leave a little army over there, uh, just high, uh, high ground defense. There's a queen that's finally going to transition into Hive, but this is a very late Hive for a player uh, in Solki's position. Like, Hive is usually done around 14 minutes. Yeah, he was, like, going for the kill. Like, he he saw blood in some way and he went for it. But, uh, yeah, like you said, it does mean that we have a very late Hive right now. If Bisu gets this fourth base up without taking much damage here, I it's going to be so hard for Solki to play from that position, I feel like, with such a late Hive. But we do have this, like, huge Lurker Hydra army here between the bases right now. Oh, Jumping huge force, snipes. Two more High Templar are really good. Huge, huge snipes here. Four High Templar just went down in rapid succession. Big storm there on the clump of Lurkers, though, and Hydras are getting wrecked right now as well. Can he snipe a couple of observers and hold this position, or will Bisu hit this from two sides? I mean, we're kind of setting ourselves up for a pincer attack, um, to, to get hit by a pincer attack, actually, here is Sulky, right? Yeah, I, this seems like such a dangerous position to put himself in, but, yeah, I mean, he's going for it. He's maybe trying to out-multitask him on the sides, but this is such a, like, it's so much harder for, oh, wow, so many high Templar going down to that lurker, actually. But it's such a hard position for Soul Key to play correctly because he has to try and like shuffle back and forth left to right dealing with Bisu, not knowing exactly which way Bisu is going to be paying attention, you know, from. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, that's three more lurkers going down. Two more observers fall as well, so there's nothing really to push these lurkers out of the way. And if he gets in between these two bases and breaks one side, if he breaks like this area over here, 
Um, and there's no observer to see anything. Well, there's one more observer coming out, but the Mutas have come forward to try and snipe that. Archons are taking them out, though. He just barely gets the observer right before the last Mutalist falls, and he holds this position just barely, but Bisu has opened up the lane between his natural and third. I think that this is just about lights out here for Soul Key. He's tried so hard to hold this position between the two bases, but... Uh, inevitably, it seems like Bisu has pushed him back. Yeah, under all the pressure, it did at least delay Bisu mining from this fourth base. And yeah, I just I'm, I'm harping on it the whole time. I'm I'm not sure how Soul Key can win from here, but at the same time, Bisu can't really cross this ridge very easily either. And we do have Hive Tech uh, probably done by now. Um, so, there, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of a way back into the game, but as soon as Bisu gets out, okay, it's not even done yet. I'm just worried about when Bisu finally ma makes it out onto the map, how Soki's going to survive. Another good high Templar snipe, though. What do you think, Saiyan? What, what do you think Soki should go for here? I think he needs to just buy as much time as possible for that Defiler play to get online here. But even with the Defiler and holding the middle of the map, we could still see Bisu take upper right, and he's trying to push forward here again. I don't know if this is the path to victory here for Soul Key. Trying to come across these bridges at this point in the game, it's, it seems a little bit futile, and we've used up all of our lurkers. We don't have any gas in the bank right now to make defilers or any more lurkers. So, yeah, things are really starting to look uh, rough here for Sulky. We're starting to switch into Lings, it seems. Some Lings are being produced, but look at the size of this army coming up for Bisu. Yeah. It is overwhelming here on the right-hand side, and he can't even hold that uh, little area there to, to prevent Bisu from getting into the middle of the map. Bisu is fully out on the map now, and it's up to Sulky to try and shut this down. Big waves of Hydras coming from the left-hand side here, but Storm's meeting them everywhere they push. Another big storm there on the left-hand side. Ugh, it's just so hard to deal with the Protoss at this point in the game. Yeah, this... I mean, this army is so big right now, and, and you see, like, Soki's broke, his supply is way, way down. He's... We're still on Lair Tech army against this, like, almost max-out Protoss with the counter army, right? Um, like, the Hydra Lurker, it's, it's gonna trade okay, but the Father Mound, on the way, we see it's about halfway done. So we're still a pretty good ways away from the Father being, like, viable in the game. And we'll see if Bisu, like, if he if he's too passive right now, it can actually get dangerous for him. As soon as the Father get out, and we've got, like, Lurkers on high grounds with the Father and Nidus Canals and stuff like this defending, it, it can actually get really iffy for Bisu, so I feel like he... He needs to get aggressive and look to get some actual damage here relatively soon. But he is pressuring now, pushing in the middle. I feel like throwing storms now and kind of shaving some army off. Sorry, go ahead. I feel like on this map specifically, it's it's not as much of a threat the sitting on high ground with lurkers and uh, defilers because as soon as you control the middle as the Protoss player, you can kind of shut down a lot of these bases, like the base in the center left, and you can cut off the base going down to the bottom left. But um, maybe that's the reason why Sulky decided to make. Uh, this choice to stay on layer tech for so long and try to push across the bridges, try to end things earlier on. He knows the difficulty of the late game. He's going to try to make his way to the late game regardless, but it just feels like Bisu is shoving him back every single place right now. He's pushing him back and back and back, and there's not much more room to wa keep walking here. He's going to get hit by a big storm, finishing off the majority of the remainder of his Hydras, and with that, Last little army getting cleaned up. There's nothing to defend the fourth. There's nothing to defend the fifth. And Bisu is moving on to high ground. GG! Our first game goes to Protoss. Yeah, really well played by Bisu. Uh, Soki just getting incredibly aggressive. Uh, you know, I was talking about it being a lurker contained because I see it on this map so often, but he wanted to kill him with the Hydra Lurker. So, yeah, coming across those bridges instead of staying on the other side. I think and that maybe it's like you said, maybe he just wanted to avoid the like hyper late game on this map. Maybe. And I think that uh, he also felt a, a little bit uh, pigeonholed into some, some sort of play like that, considering that uh, he started off with the nine pool and it didn't really get anything done. That's true. He was kind of behind from the start there. He knew that he couldn't get into a spire to defend the Corsair. He had to go Hydra. And I guess the natural follow-up with the Lair and Hydra plays is to go into Lurker, but 
It doesn't end up working out. Bisu, very calm, meticulous play there, preventing all the moves of Solki. Really, really well done. He gets the clapper from KCM, and we're going to game number two. Okay, game number two. Sharp going to be sent out to take on Bisu here for our game on Radeon. How do you feel about this map, TVP? I know you've been practicing a lot of both races recently. Yeah, I I really like this map for Protoss. I mean, it's kind of like a known thing. The big maps are very good for Protoss. Um, it's very hard to push through Radeon because you have just this giant open middle. And especially because they're cross-spawn, this just is really, really good for uh, Protoss in this situation. Very hard to split the map here. If you want to just try to take half as Terran, uh, that middle so wide open, like you said, and everything's starting off pretty normal. It looks like here, except for Beast, who's gonna take Nexus first cross spawn. That's a uh, that's a little bit rough here for Sharp. <laughs> this is the latter experience right here. Uh, yeah, there's not really anything Sharp can do about it. Rayon with a like massive rushing distance cross spawn as well. There's there's. I don't know. I, I don't feel like you can really do anything against this best Terran. It just kind of sucks to be here. Well, Sharp has shown us in the past a really fast factory timing. He likes to get that super, super quick factory out and a very, very fast vulture. Um, I'm not sure exactly the timings on that, but he, he like cuts an SCV or something like that to get it out as quickly as humanly possible. And sometimes you can catch the Protoss player off guard, even if they've gone for this Nexus first. But Bisu gets in here, he sees the exact timing of that factory, and we'll see his response here. Yeah, this might make Shark do an end scout as well, because this is a first scout cross spawn from Bisu. Um, but it looks like Shark is not going to do that. Oh, we may have just redirected. Okay, no, no. Okay. So yeah, we're still going to scout up. That's good for him, at least. And yeah, when you're going for this... Uh, you either cancel an SCV or a Marine to get your factory out faster. I, I didn't see what his gas timing was, if it was 11 or 12 gas. Um, but there can be a small window of your, if your factory timing is perfect, then there can be a small window uh, to get your Vulture in before Dragoons. But we're actually doing like a really, really greedy version for Bisu as well. We went one gate, Zealot Core. Um, instead of the usual two gate that you see. And I think this is a reaction to getting the uh, cross spawn scout. Yeah, he sees everything. Sharp as well, getting in here, realizing the position he's in. It's not looking good. His first vulture going to head out on the map here, but I don't know if this was that super fast vulture or not, actually. Um, we didn't get a shot of the base during that time, so um, it doesn't feel that fast to me. Not a Terran player, but uh, I don't think he's going to make his way into the main here, and the, the, the Dragoon should be able to drive this back in a moment. Yeah, he's just going to look to maybe kill like one or two probes and you just kind of call it okay and play from there. And yeah, we're going to force the pull, which is good. We're going to get one probe. Do we get the second shot? Looks like we missed. Uh, but yeah, getting the one probe kill and the like probe pull, this this is pretty much the most you're looking for in this situation. He's actually should be relatively happy with this. Um, Sharp should be like, it, it's kind of a worst case scenario, but it gets some of the damage, you know, done back. All right, we had a bit of a desync issue there, guys. Apologies for that. Uh, I think we've got everything figured out though now. Uh, we should be all synced up here. And the Vulture getting back in, actually getting another kill here on three kills now. Still maneuvering at the back of the base, trying to look for more kills, not able to get it. Dude, Sharp's Vulture is always insane, the amount of damage he can get. Ooh, almost losing another Vulture here, though. Gotta keep that one alive. Don't want to lose two Vultures before the mines start. Yeah, getting, what was that, three probes and a Zealot with one Vulture is, like, really, really good for Sharp. So, you know, you look, Terrans love to complain about cross spawn 12 nexus and how it's unplayable but sharp showing us that you can get a little bit of damage done and, and mitigate a lot of that advantage and i actually would say that this is kind of favorable for sharp to be honest like the supplies pretty good for him um you know is it the two factories right now is expos up and running we do have reaver tech on the way for bisu and a really fast third wow from sharp like really really fast yeah this is uh 
kind of a new counter that Sharp's come up with for dealing with the Nexus first play is he knows that there's not going to be too many observers out here. They're going to be a little bit slow. Um, going for like a really fast third mine expand could be strong. Oh, this vulture actually ran by. That missed shot on the ramp was huge. He gets in here. He sees the robotic support bay. This is exactly what he wants to see as well. He knows there's no observers. Um, there's going to be a reaver coming soon. But there's really no way to push him right now. If he takes this third and just puts mines everywhere, he should be safe. At least until he can get more factories out. Yeah, and I want to backtrack on what I said earlier. I, I thought he had two factories. That was the barracks that I was seeing on the uh, mini-map. Not, not a factory, I thought it was a barracks and an add-on. So my, my mistake there. But yeah, this this is actually really good for Sharp. And like you pointed out, there's no observers. So these mi this mine coverage makes Sharp feel extremely safe. He knows that it's Reaver before Observatory, so he just defends the Reaver and happily takes his uh, really fast third CC here. This is a crazy fast third CC. Generally, you just would not allow this to happen as Visu, but there seems to be some limitations to Nexus first. You know, people have been... Uh, Terran players have been claiming that it's it's kind of unbeatable, but there does seem to be little advantages that can be taken, and uh, that's what we're seeing from Sharp here. First shuttle poke in here, sees the CC immediately. He knows exactly what's happening now. Yeah, but it's okay that this is spotted. I mean, Sharp knows he, he just doesn't want to take any damage here, and he's going to use that SC or that uh, command center to pump SCVs, and this will just make it where when he's ready to take this early third base, he'll just have full saturation ready for it and just go into like a very strong mid game right now against the 12 Nexus. I mean, we've actually, BC's third Nexus is even a little bit slow here. I mean, 730 is not too bad, but you're typically looking around like 637 minutes for your third. Oh, he catches the shuttle and there's no Dragoons anywhere near this. He gets the moving shot. He kills the shuttle and now he's going to be able to kill off this Reaver as well. The Dragoons are just heading out on the map right now. Hoping to uh, cross safely. Actually does have an observer here finally, so he can get out uh, on the map. And it looks like he will save this Reaver. The Wraith will be pushed back here in a moment. Yeah, a little bit of a late reaction. Almost loses the Wraith there, but yeah, really good play getting the Wraith. I, I love seeing this, the Wraith against the like kind of fast Reaver. Uh, a little bit of a bad rally here. Going to lose this tank. You hate to see it, and it happens to Terran more than anybody else. Uh, now that I'm playing both races, I, I understand a lot better than I used to. Yeah, that one tank, really unfortunate there. Uh, getting that for free, though, Bisu going to make up a little bit for how far behind his third base is. I mean, we're uh, three base mining right now for Sharp, and he's just finishing up that Nexus at the third. He's going to take a fourth to try and catch up, catch up on the curve here to where Sharp's at right now. Yeah, usually for PVT, you're looking to start taking your, like, you're looking to take your fourth and then a corner base fifth whenever Terran's taking their third, usually around 11 minutes is, like, the standard. Mm -hmm. So we're basically behind a base, uh, like, an entire base of where BC wants to be right now. And I'm curious to see how he's going to handle the mid game because, you, as we see, this factory explosion now coming down for Sharp, he's probably going to go up to, like, seven or eight factories, I imagine. And this mid game push... It's going to be so powerful from Sharp. Um, is Visu, was that a Stargate that we're going for? Or is he just going for Storm? I, I didn't actually see. Not sure. What has Sharp sacrificed here? Did he get an armory with this as well? One factory, third base, and armory? Mm -hmm. Wow. He's got the armory going. He is going to have a great mid-game push here, I think. Yeah, he literally gave up nothing, actually. He, he did damage while going into a... Uh, kind of a, a accelerated mid game here so i just this reaction to a 12 nexus is one of the best reactions i feel like i've seen in a long time i really really like what sharp's done here this is a new style here what sharp's showing off and could become the standard of the future they need something to deal with the 12 nexus sharp showing that yeah. he might have the answer getting into yeah i mean like you said huge huge factory count now Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. if you look at the supplies right now, and like the game state, you would not think this was a 12 Nexus cross spawn opener. Uh, it, it looks good for Terran right now. We're on the even supply. We've got our Stargate up, or our Starport, probably Sci-Fi on the way, maybe a second Armory. 
So upgrade should be pretty good for Sharp while having like a really good supply count. Very well like defensively set up. Good mine coverage on the map. Like the game state to me looks so good for Sharp. Yeah, just about caught up on that supply right now. Sharp getting closer and closer to that 160 kind of break point here where you can really start to move out. Um, but Bisu, dude, what is he going to pull out to, to try and stop this army? He doesn't have any additional tank. Is he just going to go storm and, and speed shuttle? Maybe that's the best, most cost-efficient army he can come up with right now. Yeah, it looks like his choice here is to... um kind of have a later fifth base like he's throwing it down now and he's just going shuttle style and he's looking to just try and take like a strong fight whenever sharp comes out uh if sharp takes too long and Bisu gets the Bisu gets the top right saturated then we're gonna start seeing like a lot of shuttle harass and stuff but right now Bisu, he, i think he doesn't want to get too aggressive because he knows that sharp's like in a really strong state eco wise um so he doesn't want to risk losing too much so he's going to wait till either he maxes out or Sharp comes out and just look to fight him here with the shuttles. Sharp slowly moving forward. He's looking to just throw down mines and create space for his army. Actually, he's moving forward with everything already. This is so fast. Just imagine a, a normal game uh, around 12 minutes here. We've just maybe taken our third as the Terran player. We're hunkering down and, you know, adding on more factories. Sharp is moving out right now. He's had that third for quite some time, and he's really exploded in that supply. 170 here already. He's pushing forward, and Beast is just not quite ready. Yeah, this is crazy. You, he's maxing out at the same time you see Protoss maxing out with a 12 Nexus. Like, <laughs> this is so terrifying from Sharp. So this is history in the making right here, guys. The evolution of Terran. Uh, Sharp embodying it here right now. He's going to come forward with this massive army. A lot of zealots here at the front. Some drops as well. Can he hold this? That's so many shuttles. There's storms mixed in here as well. I haven't seen one get thrown down just yet. Oh, there it is. Okay, I thought for a minute there I was worried he didn't have Storm, but there it is. Storm's on the back line. A lot of these tanks are being cleaned up. The Zealots have all disappeared. There's only three tanks left, but the Dragoons are starting to splatter. He's going to have to back up. Yeah, maybe a slight overstay there, but oh, good good follow-up Storms on these Vultures. But we do clean up the, uh, the High Templar here as we're pushing forward. And just look at the reinforcements from Sharp. Like, he has such a high factory count already for this push. He, he's remaxing faster than the Protoss is. Even has a bigger bank than him right now. That's insane. That's so many units coming forward. Bisu, it looked like he was breaking that push. He actually left the Reavers over here on the top right. Was that the big mistake um, of this fight here? Not having those Reavers might have changed the tides. We were so close uh, at the end of that last battle. Really, Sharp did not have much left over, and just a full rally of vultures making the way to the front could have been repelled by those yeah. Reavers. He's going to bring them forward now, try to drop them here, and I think that he should be able to stop this tank uh, push from actually killing his fourth, but he's still in a really tough spot. Yeah, this is a pretty good cleanup from uh, from Bisu here. Maybe a little bit like over-eager from Sharp, maybe? Um but the first two fights like looked so good for him uh but bisu really good zealot bombs cleaned up a lot of those tanks earlier and now we're going to see some value coming out of these uh these reaver here but while this was happening sharp did take the six o'clock base going up to four base and sharp floating like two thousand minerals right now uh, i still like the game state for sharp like he's not in danger of, of taking any damage right now um but yeah I think it's okay. Like, overall, like, Bisu's supply does look pretty good right now compared to Sharp, but we're going to get into that 2-1 mech pretty soon, and, and then it's going to get a lot harder for Bisu. Pretty good position out here on the map as well for Sharp. He's got mines everywhere. He's got Bisu kind of forced back. He's just starting to clear that out. And make some lanes open for himself so that he can transfer some probes. Slowed down the probe transfer to the top right for a very long time. So Sharp's going to get his fourth base online about the same time that is going to get his fifth base online. And we're staying on that curve right now of Sharp just being in a good spot. And Bisu trying to catch up with more and more bases. Yeah, as we see there, the plus two attack is done for the mech army. Supply once again relatively even. Um, we're probably going to see a push here soon again for Sharp, and it's just going to make it where Bisu's not able to build up a bank, right, to 
So he wants to get into a bank where he can just pump out shuttles, like you see the two robos. He wants to pump out non-stop shuttles and look to like get damage and get harassment with his bank, but we haven't really had a chance to build up a bank yet. We are going to see some shuttles coming here on this uh, third base now, though. Reavers and Templar kind of whiffing, though. Looks like that's going to dead out. And the, the Reavers here actually might end up getting cleaned up. Do we lose both the shuttles? I think so. Unless they're just uh, above the screen. But that was not a lot of damage. And that's the first big drop that uh, Bisu went for. Not getting much. And now we're going to have a drop here uh, from Sharp. He's going to start to get some counter damage. Might actually get more probes than we saw Bisu get SEVs there. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Uh, looks like we killed, I guess, five or six probes. Oh, another one going down as well. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is more damage from this drop than, than Bisu did with his drop, except Bisu's drop cost like a thousand resources or more. Yeah, that was much more costly for Bisu. The cleanup during that, he lost a Reaver as well. So, things just really going Sharp's way this game. He is on course right now to hit this big timing push. Has that 2-1 ready. A lot of tanks moving through. It's a little bit of a haphazard fight, but he's catching Bisu in a bit of an awkward position as well. Not a lot of Zealots here. Most of the Dragoons are going to get wiped out. The Storms coming down were pretty darn good, killing a lot of these Vultures, so maybe a follow-up Zealot attack can get on top of these tanks, but wow, Storms getting thrown down. Really, really messy, sloppy fight here. Bisu going to lose all of those shuttles and the templar as well uh dude he just kind of fell apart there don't you think yeah bisu had a distinct lack of zealots for this fight here it was almost pure dragoon storm which it's really really hard to fight effectively against tanks with that that army so yeah that was an amazing trade for sharp here and sharp continuing to expand to the bottom left while being aggressive here and i just feel like this is kind of the game state we're going to be looking at pretty much from the very beginning right Sharp put us in a situation where he was basically staying down one base, which is great for Terran, and then being aggressive, and, and Bisu's basically been trying to survive while Sharp is continuing to grow at basically the perfect pace. Now the tempo has really been in Sharp's favor here. He's just continued to put the pressure on Bisu. Every attack that's come out, it felt like Bisu just wasn't quite ready, um, which is not the, the typical state. Uh, that we see from Protoss versus Terran. Usually the Protoss is kind of sitting there waiting while the Terran takes their time, you know, gathering up and, and getting ready for a big push out. And uh, the B at Bisu this game, he just hasn't had that time. He hasn't had any rest here. It's just been a sharp pushing out way before he's ready and taking bases uh, on curve here ahead of Bisu every single time. Now Sharp losing some SCVs down in the bottom left, but he clears out the top right, and I think that's way more important here. Yeah, normally in like base trading situations like this, like if Protoss is trading a base for a base, it's great for Protoss, but because of the tempo and, and just what the game state is, it's actually completely fine for Sharp. In fact, Sharp took out two bases for just this base that kinda wasn't really even going yet, so we're gonna continue to counter push into the six o'clock base for Bisu. We're gonna get some storm drops off on these SCVs. We're gonna kill a lot of the SCVs here though. I mean this is good for Bisu if he had more eco, but he's he's on four bases and two of them are mined out right now. Yeah. Oh great storm there killing a lot of those SCVs that are retreating. I totally agree. This is great if you've got another couple of bases behind as Bisu, but he's going to lose his entire army right now. Every single Dragoon just went down, all the Templar, all the Zealots. And Sharp's got an army behind this. He doesn't even lose the space of the six, though he lost a lot of the workers there. He keeps that alive. Oh, this, this base is still up there. That's crazy. He left only two Vultures to finish that off. And with the D-Matrix, he is going to be able to kill that Nexus, but that was really kind of close. Now bringing forward the army. That's great storms at the oh, wow. center of this big clump of tanks. A lot of those tanks go down. A lot of them are very badly injured, though, and might be able to get repaired before being finished off here. Wow. Yeah, that looked like it was going to be way worse for Sharp than it was. I, I was just waiting for those, like, five or six tanks to pop, but they just didn't quite go down. Very low on HP, it looks like. We're at two, three upgrades as well. It's going to push into space and kill us, and I feel like with this base going down, Bisu's pretty much starved out at this point. Bisu really doesn't have much left here. 
30 supply differential right now in favor of Sharp, and he's retaking this base down at the bottom left. He didn't even lose that CC. So he's just going to have so much economy here. Tons of probes just fell. And ooh, that last storm drop. That last chance for Bisu to shut down 6 o'clock. Uh, goes by the wayside there. Bisu taps out. Gee, gee, what a game here by Sharp. Showing us some new tactics. Yeah, this was really, really fun to watch. I, yeah, I mean, you hear about it all the time. The cross spawn 12 Nexus and how it's unplayable. But Sharp showing me something I've never seen before. And it looked like Bisu really couldn't do anything about it at all. No, this is uh, some very new tech from Sharp. I've only seen it a couple of times in cross spawn Nexus first. The one weakness you have is the lack of observers and utilizing mines to take a very quick third. It's tough to pull off, but beautifully, beautifully done there by uh, Sharp. I feel like the we only saw one mistake from him that entire game, which was the tank kind of wandering out onto the map and getting lost. But other than that, perfection, absolute perfection. You can tell that he's been practicing that build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was beautiful. I enjoyed that a lot. On to the next one. Here we've got Sharp versus Shine. Blitz Y is going to be our map, that two-player map. This is a tough map for Zerg, I feel. How do you feel about this map as Terran versus Zerg? Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that, to be honest. Uh, it gets hard. Well, I feel like it's difficult late game for Terran as well because it starts getting a little bit hard to protect all your bases but um I don't know this map too well for TVZ like I am still relatively new to Terran and this is probably my as a Protoss player swapping to Terran this is the matchup that I know the least about uh, I know as a Protoss player this map really sucks against Terran but I don't know too much about it against Zerg well from the games that I've played here uh, the early game is not too bad but the third base location is, is difficult to hold um, so things can get pretty hairy once the, the Terran takes map control um, during that kind of shaky mid game that every Zerg kind of dreads uh, do you typically is... want to take bottom left or the one on the catwalk for your third um Bottom left is where we see the pro players take theirs. I'm not so sure. I, I, I really don't know. I guess that's the best just because they do it is why I would do it. But um, the, the catwalk, I guess it's too close. Maybe that's the reason why they're not doing it more. Great micro here by Shine to start off. He does throw down the eBay though. And some links are going to pop out here. This was an eight racks from Sharp, by the way. And the pool first from Shine means that he's not going to take any damage he's actually just going to come across a map and maybe put some pressure on sharp yeah this is pretty much what you're looking for right when you're doing oh no first. sorry it was a it was a uh supply depot supply depot first just a normal build here he's gonna pull okay, some okay. scvs to the wall oh wait a second oh hold on hold on hold on don't 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 mess that up don't don't mess that up there nice job sharp pulling back the work injured scv that was a scary moment, dude. I thought that he yeah, might just die right there. I could have been a game losing mistake. I I was definitely like, I kind of stopped talking and holding my breath. And I was like, are we just going to lose like this? Not oh, after. I think we're going to get in two lanes. You can't, two Marines, be, can't be losing like that, Sharp, after playing such a great game last one. Oh, loses Ooh. another Marine. Pretty annoying there, but I guess one more Ling maybe coming in. I think he's got one more. I don't think he builds any more after this, though. Sh Shine... I'm sure has a very specific build that he wants to pull out here. He will lose this Marine though. And one, <laughs> the Ling with one oh HP goodness. gonna get in here, take a look around, see everything that Sharp's up to. What is the build that Shine has to follow this one up? Man, I don't know. I guess we're, I don't know. We, you can't really two racks Academy anymore. Like Shine should feel so good right now. We've killed what, three or four Marines with just a few Lings. Like, he doesn't have to worry about building Sunkens for a while. He doesn't have to build any more Lings for a little while. Like, he is so comfortable now after killing all these Marines. And it just kind of kills any potential timing, I feel like, that Shark could have had for early game pressure. Yeah, for sure. If we'd, for example, seen uh, Sharp hold with the SCVs properly there in the wall, you would feel terrible here as shine but as it sense it's not too bad this is really a build that's meant to stop the eight racks but 
Filling off a few Marines uh, kind of evens things out a bit. Uh, he is going to go into Spire now and has Ling Speed done as well. Uh, has good vision on the map. He's got the Overlord over top of the Natural here, which is typically not the case. Usually you have it a little bit further back, but since he was killing those Marines, he was able to slip it over top of that Natural and get some more information here, see how many Marines are being pumped out, etc. But... He's just going to build the bare minimum number of links, and we'll see where he wants to go from here. He will have a pretty good mutilist timing going, but it's not going to be with too much economy here. This is, after all, a pool first build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll definitely be looking to get some damage done with these muta. Our, our third is going to be pretty late. Like you said, the eco is pretty pretty low with this build. Um, yeah, it still actually doesn't look so. Like I said, I don't know a whole lot about this matchup. To me, it felt so good for Sean in the beginning, but I guess looking at it now, it's it's really still not really that good of a game state for Sean. No, you really don't get too much economy going uh, with this build. Uh, you have to play super super scrappy, and mm -hmm. generally speaking. It's not acceptable to lose their early lings with this build. You have to keep those lings alive. Trading them out for marines is... I, I mean, like I said, it's okay. But uh, they are everything that you have to control the Terran player uh, and prevent yourself from dying up until you get this mutilus harassment going. You can't, like... You, yeah. what, I, I want to stress this. You cannot afford to build sunken colonies here. You just can't do it. Yeah, I see that now with the drone count. Like, if he has to build, like, a, a sunken or two, then he, he's basically dead at that point just from just from having no drones. Yeah, Mutas it's... are going to make it up here now. Uh, what is it? Only four Muta, it looks like. And we've already got the turrets and everything set up, so it's going to be hard for Sean to find any damage from here. Yeah, it's going to keep adding those on, but there's really not much economy behind this. Like we were saying, it's very important that he does some damage here. Whereas Sharp, I mean, all he needs to do is hold on right now and keep scanning for a third base. Just see if he can uh, sense that Shine is taking one or when he's taking one. Uh, then he can start to try and move out. But really, just continuous turret production here is going to be uh, key uh, while controlling these Marines properly. Diving in with some Lings here, trying to kill off a few more Marines. Opening up this position so that he can kill off the Supply Depot. Uh, but I don't think he can get any more here. That second supply depot is well covered by the other turrets and that bunker as well. Having the bunker is very nice for Sharp. How many turrets does he have in his main, though? That's going to be the important factor here. Yeah, what are we looking at? It's only three and then the two on the barracks. So not a whole lot. And we've let off a lot of the Marines. So the Marine count is a little bit low right now. Going to dive on top of these turrets and get them both low, but not quite finish either one. And now we're bleeding off a few meters as well. Oh, that's really painful, dude. These turrets were so low. And he comes back in again. Still not able to kill that. Dude, Shine. <laughs> things are really not going his way here with this Mutalisk attack. He cannot open up that position now, I feel. With five racks do we have here pumping? He's going to start to get overwhelmed just with pure Marine here pretty soon. And even more turrets are being added on. I think that Sharp is playing this out beautifully. No, four. Okay, three racks with a, fa a factory coming up. I uh, mistake that uh, eBay there. Yeah, it tricked me too. We saw a scan go down in the natural from Sharp, and he saw the drone count, so he's probably feeling pretty good after killing a bunch of those Muta. And another scan goes down, maybe looking for the third, looking for the tech of Shine right now, seeing if it's still Muta or if we're getting a Hydrogen, anything like that. But it's just continuous Muta from Shine here. Uh, the timer is ticking right now for Shine. He needs to get in and clear a position, open up some space for these Mutas to get some real damage going. And he does get rid of the two turrets, opens up this spot a little bit, but Sharp reacting pretty quickly with his Marines. He's in a good position now to try and stop this from getting any worse. The factory floating has actually become a target for bouncing glaives uh, from Shine to hit some of these SCVs and Marines. He's starting to clear out this position. Really interesting move there, pulling the factory over top of the damaged turret to keep it alive. Ooh, a bit of a mistake there from Shine. He kind of lets the Mutalus float in and get picked off. A couple of them do go down, but there's the timer I was talking about. We have an armory done. And the starports are just about finished up here uh, with their add-ons. So he's going to have Valkyries out 
in just a few moments, and that's really going to shut down this attack from Shine. He's going to have to transition. Did he do enough damage? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. And we see the Queen's Nest coming down now, looking for Hive, but there's a good chance that we get a Valkyrie push coming up before... Uh, not even, like, a good chance. It's, it's pretty much guaranteed there's going to be a push coming from Sharp before the Hive really gets any anything like uh contributes to the game at all um mm -hmm. did you see if we're making tanks or oh, no sorry we're floating the factory i'm sorry yeah the factory floating here means at least there's not going to be a tank push hitting that front um before defiler or anything like that he could make a bunch of sunken colonies to try and hold back the uh the marine medic with the the valkyries that are coming out right now but that would be a serious blow to the economy once again i think that shine's going to try and block the ramp here that comes down into his natural with a bunch of eggs. Um, or no, he's just going to head out on the map and start to build eggs out in the front? Is that what we're going to do? I thought he was going to try and pull something sneaky so that he could get his sunken colonies up in time. He really doesn't have any sunken colonies back at home. He's just relying purely on the Mutalist right now and morphing these Hydra's way out in the front. Yeah, he is supply blocked right now, so can only make a single Lurker, which is... Like, really, really bad for Shine right now. This push is coming in, and there's just going to be a single Lurker. Oh, that's so bad. This has happened to me so many times on ladder, by the way. Um, where you get supply blocked right as you're about to make Lurkers. It's one of the worst feelings. It's going to die here. The first Lurker. These other two Lurkers are going to die as soon as they pop out. Might as well cancel at this point, but... He is going to let them finish, it looks like. Try to pick up some marine kills while the marines are focusing down these eggs, but immediately those lurkers get picked off. There's one sunk in here, and nothing to back up uh, the, the position right now, aside from a few mutas and a few scourge. Dude, perfect control here from Sharp as well. Not allowing the Valkyries to fire until they're safe from these scourge, and they're going to absolutely wipe out that mutalus clump. Nothing left here for Shine. Just a perfect takedown by Sharp, and we were actually talking about this before, that there is a possibility Sharp could take an all-kill here. He's looking to be on form tonight. Yeah, really good by Sharp. I'm, I'm rooting for Sharp right now. As a new Terran player, I, uh, I find myself rooting for Terrans all the time, and I'm very inspired first by this TVP play, and, and now by this, like, just responding to the situation really, really well, doing a good job of keeping up scans, getting into them exactly what uh, Zerg is doing, and just having basically a perfectly timed push to finish the game. What a heartbreaker for shine there not able to kill those two turrets over top of the barracks yeah. just not able to get any position at all uh, out of that kind of nice early game that he had with the the kills on the marines but uh you can just see why at 12 pool became so popular it's just not very mm -hmm. robust the pool first build but Shine tried to make it work, not able to do so. Sharp going to continue on. Either Snow or Stork is coming up next. Stork going to be sent out on Citadel here to try and take down Sharp again with the cross map. Are we going to see the same build? <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't really know much about Stork's uh, PVT yet. I don't know what styles he likes to play. I, I'm sure you've seen some of it, so maybe you can enlighten me a little bit. Oh, yeah. He is a carrier player through and through. Oh. Um, he does like to do Nexus first. He likes to take as many advantages as he can. Stork, um, although he is a legendary Protoss player, he's been with us throughout the Kespa era, was incredibly strong. Uh, I just don't think he's quite at the level um, that these new players are at, that the, the players in the modern day are at now. He's like a little bit slower. Uh, he relies on more strategic victories than, you know, out, out multitasking. And I think Sharp will give him a lot of trouble here. Yeah. Well, I will say for this map, this is a very good Terran map, TVP. And it's really not that good of a carrier map. So if Stork does like to play carrier, that is maybe a little bit iffy. This this map does tend to lend more towards playing shuttle style because of uh, all the different like walls and ramps and stuff that Terran can abuse in this matchup. Alright, let's see if Stork wants to play off his own meta here. Go for some shuttle style. Um, 
he's already started off with no nexus first and this is yeah gasless fast expand for sharp so i mean I'm, this is already looking kind of good for him yeah it's a good start for sharp already 15 cc against um 15 cc crawl spawn against a protoss that did not go 12 nexus <laughs> This is, um, if you're going 23 Nexus, it's like worst case scenario. We'll see what Stork's Nexus timing is going to be. If he wants to go 21 or 23. Looks like it's probably not going to be rangeless. Yeah, there's the range. Yeah, yeah he even so wasted a bit of time chasing the SCV into the top right. And now he's finally going to get the scout. But I think we are going to see like 22, 23 Nexus here. Yeah, it's pretty much worst case for Stork. It's not like game ending by any means, but... When you're playing 23 Nexus or 21 Nexus, you, you don't want to see this. Yeah, it's going to be that 23 Nexus. It's going to get pushed back with the probe too. He finally gets in here to see it. Um, he's going to see the timing on the CC. Oh, he's going to keep the probe alive. That was some pretty fancy footwork there from Stork. But, I mean, it's small, small wins here for Stork where it's, it's massive victories for Sharp right now in, in just the yeah. early game build orders. Yeah, we're going to see these goons come down and try to put some pressure on just to kind of force repairs and mitigate some of that, that lead that Sharp's going to have. But Karen's going to have an SCV lead basically for the rest of the game at this point. So as a Protoss player, it's it's just it's a little bit of a heart sinker when you see this build match up. And I'm curious to see how Stork is going to respond to this. Sometimes you'll see Protoss will not make the Nexus at 23 when they realize this and just continue to go up to like non-stop Dragoons and go up to like 29 Nexus or something like that just to get more and more pressure on their goons. Uh, but we did get the 23 Nexus thrown down. There comes the Robo. See if he wants to go maybe for a Reaver bust. You do see that sometimes nowadays against this build. Yeah, I thought he was actually going to throw down a pylon over uh, at the center right there with the probe that was kind of mm. running around. But instead, he's, I guess, searching around for a potential hidden uh, starport or something like that. I'm not sure what that probe is doing right now. It's really scouting out the whole map. Might as well, I guess, since uh, we've got containment here on the Terran. Just make sure that there's nothing sneaky hidden out here. But uh, he's not going to find anything. Um, he's just probably going to take a really quick third Nexus here, right? Just just try to get back into this game somehow by eco ecoing his way out of it. Yeah, I said Reaver bus, but it's not a proxy Robo. So, yeah, of course, that's not what, it, that's not what it's going to be. Yeah, I'm still curious to see what our response is going to be from Stork. He only sent one Dragoon, so he's really not punishing Sharp at all uh, for this build. So Sharp's pretty much getting away with it as much as possible. Is he Stork's just... really worried about something being hidden on the map. Yeah. He's got to pretty much the entire map. Yeah, he even sent one of the Dragoons instead of getting pressure. Sent it down to the bottom left to make sure that there's some, not something down there, but uh, Sharp is fine with his position. He doesn't need a sneaky play like that to be ahead. Yeah. He's already ahead. Yeah, here comes the tank to shoot these goons away so we can go back to mining without the repair, but you really didn't have to commit much repairing uh, to this bunker. So, yeah, this, this is just basically an ideal game state right now for the build that Sharp went for. And it looks like Stork's just trying to play a normal game. I mean, he's he's got like a normal six-minute third coming down with the observers and stuff, even though he knows there's no vultures on the map. So it's kind of an interesting lack of reaction, I feel like, from Stork so far. Well, Stork, he has been uh, one of the big brains of Protoss for a long time. Maybe he's uh, starting to fall behind. We call him the dinosaur Protoss because he does tend to play like a, a bit of a dinosaur, a little bit slower, lumbering along, um, following behind the meta a bit. He's like one of those great coaches uh, that you really want on your team. A lot of uh, in these team games, like the the BJ Extinction event or something like that for Africa TV, uh, they he, he's very sought after as a coach, um, but not very highly ranked as a player anymore. And Sharp is just giving him the runaround here. It feels like he's got every all of his defenses up properly. He's got his Goliaths out. He's gonna scan and kill this observer. As that goes down, all of the information that Stork could glean has just been thrown out the window. And uh, whatever Sharp d does from here, I mean, there's no wrong choice, I don't, I, I feel, from Sharp right now. 
Yeah, another beautiful thing that Sharp did here, just kind of a small thing just to add on to his advantage. He saw the robo and just kind of assumed it wasn't going to be cancelled or anything like that and went into Goliath with no engineering base, so he even got to skip turrets after going 15cc. Like, this really is just perfect for Sharp so far. Oh man, these drag goods are going to try to come up here and kill one of the tanks. They do get one tank, but I think a lot of dragons are about to go down. He's really got to pull back here a little bit quicker. Killing off some uh, Goliaths is just one of the worst trades I've seen. Why would you need to kill Goliaths right now? We don't have anything in the air uh, that needs to be defended. You know, if there was a shuttle with some Reavers out here, maybe that's a good kill. But uh, it's pure ground army right now, and just killing off Goliaths is not really going to help you in a later push. One tank goes down for like, what, six goons? Something yeah. like that? Yeah, I mean, he does have the Reaver coming out now, but I mean, it's really hard to justify the trade that he just took. I mean, that was one tank and three Goliath, right, for so many Dragoons. And replacing the Goliath is not that hard for Sharp. Especially on five factory. Oh, he's gonna see a fourth base here. What does Sharp do to answer? Is he gonna take a third really quickly now? You know, like a nine minute third base or something like that? Or is he just going to gear up, add a bunch more factories, and go across the map and try to shut this down? I mean, honestly, he can just go now. Like, he, he has his five tank count and he's got five factor behind us. This is just a standard five fact plus one push. It's gonna be all vultures behind us. Um, if he wants to commit, it looks like he's unsure. I thought we were going, so it looks like he is maybe going to take the 3 o'clock base. Maybe because he saw the Observer see him, he decided not to pull the trigger right away. Um, I, I feel like Stork is very vulnerable to a push. Like, he saw the 4th base timing. The opening has been ideal for Sharp, so I thought we were just going to go. And maybe he still is just a little bit later. Yeah, it seems like he is going to go now. After killing that many Dragoons... You're feeling so good here as Sharp, like your push is going to be way stronger. His defense is going to be really, really weak here. Um, Stork has quite a few Dragoons. He's got Zealots, no speed though, and one shuttle. Can he actually stop this push? That's a really good setup by Sharp as well. Sieging before everything comes in range. And uh, Vultures are going to run by into the main at the oh, same man. time. A beautiful play here from Sharp. Absolutely uh, on character here, getting so many kills during this fight, and I don't think that uh, Storks even realized it yet. He's not paying attention. So many kills in the main right now. Yeah. I mean, this, this was just, like, a perfect game from Sharp so far. Like, your, your five-pack timing, the five-pack plus one, is looking to push into a Protoss that's going Reavers. Dork didn't even have his Reavers in position to slow the push down. And then the opening was just everything Sharp could have wanted. We got the 15 CC against 23 Nexus. We killed six Dragoons. Like, yeah, this has just been a perfect game from Sharp. Ooh, coming forward with the Reaver. He does get a pretty good shot and the pickup as well. But now that the shuttle is dead, the Reaver will go down. The tanks are too many. The Dragoons are too few. All the blue blood getting splattered here, and the rallies of vultures coming across the map right now cannot be stopped. Sharp will claim this fourth base as he takes a third of his own. His position looking unbeatable. Oh my, these are still alive? Still what? Alive. 14 kills! 14 oh kills. my god. That's insane. Dude, these, the vultures of Sharp are legendary. It's crazy. And I think they only call 75 minerals. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds balanced, but... F the, I mean, this is still alive. Dude, what even is this vulture up here? Um, bringing everything to the front right now, I guess, is Stork to try and hold on, but... Sharp not phased at all, continuing this push forward. He knows that he's just moments away from the victory here. And on a roll right now, can he actually go for an all kill? It's possible. I'm cheering it's for him possible, right now. But he's got the final boss of the PVT coming up if he beats the next third. True, true. He's got to take on Hero and then Snow. That's a big yeah. task. <laughs> Setting up tanks here along the wall, taking out the third while banging on the front door here of the natural. Stork is getting shoved back right now. GG is called GG. Sharp. Takes that game away. As you said, perfect, perfect play from him. Yeah, Sharp just looking. His TVP is looking amazing today. 
All right, flow state has been achieved here for Sharp. He is locked in right now, going up against Hero. This is a serious, serious competitor. Cross map, cross map on retro. This is going to be a banger. Yeah, imagine he takes out Soul Key and Hero in the same day. The, the two finalists of the last season, right? That would be insanely impressive. <laughs> Sharp, I mean, he has the momentum to to make it happen. And I mean, he's... Zerg this season has really been falling apart. I don't know what the the uh, motivation or what the, the team spirit is like for Zerg right now in their booth, but um, it's it's got to be a bit pretty dismal. They've been like flatlined. They've lost every week for the past like five weeks in a row, and now they're here, about to get eliminated. What what is this, what is Hero feeling right, like right now? I'm sure it's nothing like the elation that Sharp has at the moment. Well, it's one of two things, right? Uh, either he's feeling disheartened because he's watching his brother and getting smashed over and over again, or he's thinking, here's my chance to be the hero for the team. I know sometimes I, and, and that is intended fun, by the way, uh, I know for me, I kind of don't mind watching my teammates lose to somebody before I play them because it makes me look that much better when I win, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I get motivated to play better when my teammates are losing. Right. Yeah, it's, it depends on the type of person you are. Let's see what type of person Hero is here. He's sending his drone down to the bottom right. Just totally normal openers here on both sides. We got the 12 hatch, and we've got that wall in there at the front for Sharp. So he's going to be taking his uh, CC here pretty quickly. And just getting into a nice and normal game. Nothing crazy like we saw out of Shine earlier. Yeah. Um, what do you know of Hero's uh, ZVT? What, what does he like to do in this matchup, typically? Just really standard play, or does he do anything kind of fancy, or, or what is he like? He's a very standard player. Um, 2.5 hatch. Uh, very, very yeah. often. Uh, his Defiler play is really, really fantastic. Maybe, uh, I was going to say second to none, but maybe somebody like Action or Soul Key might be uh, a little bit better than him in that regard, but he is just really, really strong. The late game macro, surviving uh, on three base or four base. Let's see what he decides to do here for third base. I feel like uh, taking a natural has been more uh, meta recently, but uh, that meta does change pretty quickly uh, as yeah. you know players adapt. Yeah, it kind of for a little while was taking main base for your third, right? I saw a lot of that, and now we're back to taking the natural in mm -hmm. a lot of games. Um, I guess the reason being is, is two thought processes, right? The main base is easier because you got lurkers on the ramp, so it can be easier to defend. But if you secure a natural base, then you have that pocketed fourth gas, uh, which is pretty much a win condition for Zerg in a lot of, a lot of games. Yeah, so uh, I guess it depends on how aggressive the Terran player is going to be, right? If you're scared of drops mm -hmm. and you're scared of... Uh, them breaking you on three bases maybe the the main base is going to be better but if you're confident that you can hold then definitely the the natural is gonna uh, prove a much more valuable actually thinking about taking the third over here at the uh the, the 12 o'clock are we serious is he going to go for like a hydro defiler play this game or are we going to see like a mute all in what are we going to see out of hero he's not going for the 2.5 hatch getting the third base uh, on location there, the third hatchery on location up at 12 o'clock. This is going to be something interesting, uh, something we're not used to seeing yeah. out of Hero. Yeah, because I guess taking this third base means that getting to a fourth base becomes extremely difficult, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so he's basically forcing himself into a, a position, even making a fourth hatchery here at the third base. Oh, I got to um, I gotta say this, uh, about Hydralis Defiler, this is really looking like that style it's so powerful um if you're really good with defiler control and hydralisks uh, you can get a lot of value out of that but yeah like you said very difficult to take a fourth um this is an interesting decision here for hero to do this style uh, on this map in this position like we're cross map um He's just going to take this base right now. And where does he take his fourth? I guess maybe at the uh, center left. Something like that. Uh, this is... 
It's hard to this say. is going to be strange. This is going to be a weird one. I'm, I'm getting excited, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what is uh, how we're going to transition from this. I, I'd like to see Hydra Defiler because I, it's actually a style that eventually I plan on trying to learn Zerg as well, and that's the style that I feel like I'd want to learn. So, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how he plays from here. Now, a lot of players who go for Hydralis Defiler style, they'll actually go for the third hatchery a lot faster um, mm. and get and defend with Sunken Colonies. But that's not what Hero's done here. He's done like a two hatch build uh, to get two hatch Muta out really fast. Uh, so he doesn't have to build any Sunken Colonies. And then he's getting the third hatch and the fourth hatch at the same time over there at the third base. So this is something we haven't really seen before. Hero trying out something new here in the KCM. And that's what I love to see. Yeah, it looks like we, what is it, only four Muta, and then I think we're just heavy, heavy drones behind us. So it's just going really eco-heavy behind these few few Muta. Uh, it does mean it's a little bit scary when that bio comes out, though, because our, our Muta count is so low. Yeah, absolutely. He should be able to pump out a lot of Mutalis now, though. The, the third gas is online, and he's got this many drones. Uh, he will have to take a good fight here, though, because he's not ready to make any sort of transition into Lurkers just yet. Yeah, Sharp kind of half pushing out with his bio here, and this is something you see Terrans do a lot, just because by moving out with your bio and just having a presence on the map, it makes it where the Zerg can't really look for harassment anymore. They're going to have to get kind of a defensive posture because they'd be worried about the bio coming across and killing them. Still just four mutas here, but there are more coming. Hero, very, very low on army count right now. He's making mutas at the very last moment. And the transition going to start here for Sharp as well. He scanned, he saw the Hydra Den and Queen's Nest. He knows the timing, so he starts the factory on curve here. Sharp has a good bio ball, but he's a little bit nervous about pushing across the map right now. Giro's keeping him back pretty, pretty efficiently at the moment. Yeah, this ball's a little bit stranded right now, but it looks like there's not much, anything else coming out from Hero to try and crush this at the moment. Just kind of between the two armies, making it where neither player is really going to be getting aggressive. Um, going up to six racks here for a Sharp, so a lot of bio is going to be coming out pretty soon. One of the big counters to the Hydralis Defiler style is actually... Uh, going into two factory tank. Um, usually you get the third base out before that. We've still got time to do that, but it's with this many barracks out already, it's kind of looking like uh, he wants to just go for SK Terran style, which can be hard to micro versus Igelus Defiler. And we are getting into that hive now. More and more drones have just popped out. So Hero's supply, you can see blossoming here, even above... Uh, where Sharp is at with six racks, it's kind of insane. He's pumping out so many workers and so much uh, supply right now. It's it's really next level. Diving in here, going to kill off some turrets once again. Clearing this position, but Sharp just heading across the map, knowing that there's not a solid defense back home. He knows that these mutas have to respond. And they will. Yeah. Yeah, Hero was helping to get Sharp to turn out a little bit more because this bio ball is terrifying. But we got a bunch of lurkers on the way now and the Defiler Mount coming. So it's going to be kind of a, a closed window here for Sharp with all these lurkers coming out to defend. Yeah, I can't really get any damage here until he's got some science vessels out to deal with those lurkers. Taking control of the barracks here right now. Sharp going to start yeah. to push across the map. He doesn't have. Uh, vessels, so he's got to be wary of any uh, Zerg or sorry, lurker landmines here. Old position lurkers could be a real problem. Setting up in the front, hopefully Sharp will scan that before moving forward and uh, getting trapped by those lurkers. Yeah, he's not gonna be able to get anything done here. Yeah, just gonna back away. The Filers mound is done. The Filers are gonna start to hit the field. Hydralis. Going to be coming out soon as well with their upgrades. Yeah, Hero has made so many drones, man. He just has an insane economy here. And he's held back sharp with hardly any mutas at all. He made like maybe 13 mutas, something like that, total. Yeah, he, he really didn't have to commit that much. He, with a relatively small group of mutas, was just trading pretty well, forcing out a lot of stamps, never really over committing or fighting. And, and yeah, he didn't bleed off many mutas. Um, oh. He's going to go for the vessels here. 
They are a little bit exposed. I'm gonna run back to the, the turrets right now, but uh, we should have Irradiate here soon. Quick Sharp, not gonna throw it down just yet. He can't get any damage anywhere though, and Hero is blasting ahead towards the late game. Yeah, we're, we've reached the game state now where Hero basically took zero damage. We're on high tech and up like 15 to 20 supply right now. This this is starting to look really dangerous for Sharp. Time to add on even more macro hatcheries here for Hero. Plague is going to be done soon as well. Double upgrades here coming. Ling's starting to be spammed out. We should have Hydralis coming here soon too. Is he actually going to go into like ultra or something here what what are we gonna see out of hero i thought it was definitely gonna be um hydras but mm -hmm. with this many lings being produced it's starting to feel more like a a uh ultraless build or something like that throwing down two dark storms here is gonna take some position on the map but irradiates of course come out to slow that progress yeah, I mean, this is a decent little small sequence here for Sharp. And yeah, you bring up a good point about the composition. I, I'm i not really sure what we're trying to transition into. Like, we don't see an Ultra Den, but like you said, it's a lot of lings. I guess just because he needed something to spend the minerals on while he's waiting for gas. Uh, I can't imagine he can go into Ultra off with three gas at this point in the game. But it's a really nice cleanup here, picking off a bunch of Marines. Yeah, just using up some of those mutas, some of the extra lings they were produced. He has so much of a bank, like you said, 1,200 minerals. Might as well throw some of that into lings, but uh, hydras are starting to be incremented out now. Lurkers sitting back here. That's so many lurkers. Wow, we really know where that gas is gone. Um, does need a defiler, though. We don't have one right here. Okay, there they are coming up to the front, and plagues should be done, so... That's the big threat right now. It's not the, the lurkers, not the, the lings. It's actually the plague, which is going to be the real concern here for Sharp. Yeah. While Bio does beat uh, Hydro pretty badly head on, you throw in a plague and then suddenly Marines are terrible against Hydro. That's so many lurkers. That is so, so many lurkers. I don't know how we break through this without, uh, without tanks, but he's going to start to radiate things down and, and slowly chip away. Um, getting in between here with two marines actually preventing this drone from getting over to the third is kind of a funny play from Sharp. Actually really nice. So I was going to say, the one thing for Sharp that he does have going in his favor is Hero still only on three base. So while the lurker count and stuff looks really scary, just getting these irradiates and kind of cleaning them up and getting this value right now can add up a, like really, really quickly for Sharp in this situation because we're just so late getting a fourth gas for Hero, where Sharp is going to be mining from his own third base pretty soon. Well, we can't really engage this uh, Defiler Hydra army here. We have to back away and irradiate the Defiler. Um, unfortunately, Sharp is backing away against, uh, you know, a Defiler that's actually following this army. So, uh, he hasn't been able to irradiate that. And he's actually gone for what I was talking about earlier. The double uh, factory tank production here has started, but might not be uh, prepared in time here. With this Defiler coming up to the front, he's going to get the Dark Storm down. And two more vessels go down. Dude, so quick here, jumping on top of that. Going to pick off some tanks and get on top of the factories. This is a really big problem right now for Sharp. More uh, Hydras and Lurkers coming across the map right now. Extra Defilers. Just everything rallying here. Sharp, I mean, it, you seem so robust with the tank production, with six uh, barracks production as well. But things can fall apart super fast if the Zerg starts to rally straight to, to your natural with Defilers and Hydras. Yeah, good irradiate some of these Defiler, though. And these clouds are going to dissipate, and those Defiler are going to die in the back, so at least we're not in danger of dying right now. But it's such a scary situation having all these Lurkers and Hydras and, and potential Defiler right outside your doorstep, because as we all know, Dark, dark Swarm's going down to your natural is, is a dead Terran. Well, Sharp's going to try something a little bit crazy here. Double dropship with a lot of fire bats going over, it seems like, towards the third base. Let's see if he can get in there um, and whether there's going to be... Oh, dude, he's got no vision on this. He might actually get right in on top of this third. He scans to check it out beforehand. Might be tipping the hand a little bit to Hero, but it's just pure lings popping out here. So the fire bats are going to do really, really well against this. 
Dropping right behind the mineral patches. So many drones are falling. Finally, Hero pays attention. He sees it. And at the same time, moving out along the left-hand side here, Sharp is going to do kind of a two-pronged attack and really start to take advantage of the chaos that he's producing here at the third base. Yeah, really, really good sequence for Sharp again here. Killing a lot of drones, getting a pretty good trading, getting in a position now on this this fourth base. Probably going to throw a bunch of irradiates on these lurkers. They are all spread out with nothing stacked, so we can't get them all at once. But it looks like we're actually going to push into the kind of the space here between the third and natural. Yeah, not going to be able to make too much progress there. The plague comes out, the dark storm comes down. Uh, everything will be held back here, but maybe he's opened up some some space here to break into the center left. Uh, ah, yeah, that's see. that's a plague right there. Those are plague marines. They cannot break that. Um, tank over here. Oh, a bunch of hydras just out of nowhere going to catch this tank. Pretty annoying for Sharp. Is hoping to, to break into the space right now, but can't really make any progress. Another plague there comes down, and this position will be broken, but maybe Sharp can prevent reinforcements with these uh, science vessels stop more defilers from getting down here and try to break the center left with the tank push. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, honestly, these random hydras bottom left coming up here and picking up that tanking, forcing a siege, stopped Sharp from getting into the position like fast enough where he wanted to be. So I don't know what they were doing down there, but uh, yeah, they, they were like in the perfect spot at the perfect time. Well, look at this right now. Sharp going to siege up on low ground and hit the gas geyser that is actually a huge huge play from sharp and at the same time another drop coming in these are so so low these two drop ships one hp on one of them just a few hp on the other hydras coming up from behind this army uh they're gonna get completely wiped out by the uh tanks and he's not sieging these uh lurkers the lurkers they're just sitting and not dealing any damage this finally they do uh, burrow, but so many drones have gone down. There's almost no drones left, and I think that tank army, uh, this tank push here is gonna kill that gas no matter what. Is a Sharp doing it again? Dude, he's doing it right now. He's doing it. He is playing like an absolute god today. This push towards the fourth base was so well thought out with the drops coming yeah. into the uh, the third at the same time. It's just brilliant play by him. Another base went up at the, the center right, uh, the top right, excuse me, the natural there. But uh, Hero has to get that online like now. He has to get it online like right, right now. Uh, or he's just going to dry up on gas here. We're hitting the 18 minute mark already. Yeah, the supply still looks totally fine for Hero. But it's just, um, he, he needs this fourth gas to be up and running and, and kind of stay running. He did manage to get the, like you said, he got a fourth ga uh, gas up now. The radio's going to come down and kill some defiler, kill some lurker. It's crazy because it, it feels like Sharp is like dominating him, but it's still such a playable position for Hero. Yeah, absolutely. Still a lot of life left in Hero right now. Fire bats are going to clear out these lings, but a big play goes down on a lot of the remaining units here. Good snipe there uh, with the tanks sieging up just in range there of the Defiler. Defiler being pushed back. Some more lings and uh, lurkers are going to come out here. More radiates go down, but a lot of these uh, vessels are starting to fall. Bringing forward the Mutilus now. He's just going to snipe down some of these tanks and uh, pick off the, the remainder of the Marines. He should actually go after these science vessels right here. They are so low on that HP. Pulls out the irradiated uh, Mutilus there. Dude, does Sharp not know about the base in the top right? I think he just doesn't know because he's pushing into the third. He could have easily sent his army up to the, to the top right at that moment instead and broken that base, I think. Yeah, 100%. Like, it did have a Nidus Canal there, but there was all that fighting going on, on the left side, and he could have just stemmed in and killed the canal. But, yeah, I think he just doesn't know what's there. We're pushing into this total clock, but he is getting another, like, really, really good trade here. And the supply is starting to get worse and worse for Hero. And he's yeah. setting up with the oh. left side, potentially, to push in again. Oh, this is so good. You love to see it. Just drop in the... the D matrix here on the tank it gets targeted by the lurkers the entire time they take no damage he's pushing into the natural at the same time plus three is done his upgrades are looking fantastic he's shoving in everywhere all at the same time he kills the defiler 
Oh, that Defiler snipe so, so big right now. Nidus Canal popping through some uh, lurkers. He's probably wondering, where where does that Nidus Canal even connect? I don't know if there's another base somewhere on the map. You'll probably realize now that there must be something out there somewhere. Sharp taking another base in the bottom left during all of this. Dude, he is godlike here today. Yeah, this this is really inspiring play from Sharp today. I mean, everything just looks so good. And this was the worst, I feel like, position he's been in today. And he just found a way to make winning look so easily against a Zerg that's ahead on supply. Pretty insane. Dude, he's just killed so many drones at that base. Now he realizes it. Yeah, you've got to have something over here, right? He sees the creep. He knows where the base is. He's going to send another force over there to start to deal with that. The Nidus Canal has been killed. We've got fire bats and marines working together here to try and break this base. A few hydras are going to come down with a lurker and a ling to try and stop this attack. And it looks like he will be able to shut that down, but he's just got so much momentum now. And another round of fire bats and marines making their way to the front. Dude, Sharp is just killing it right now. Yeah, I love the constant stream of uh, firebats on these pushes as well. He, he never really stops making firebats for reinforcements. You see a lot of Terrans overcommit, I feel like, to Marines only. But even though it's it's a lot of Hydra, he's still making so many firebats, which, again, actually can be pretty good against the Hydra Lurker Swarm, right? Mm -hmm. so I, I really like it. Yeah, he's adding on so many firebats here, and it's just always a great decision uh, when it comes to, like, really low economy a zerg player when they're lacking on that gas links become like the stop gap for the the zergs while they're trying to get that next gas online and really identifying that S sharp just adding on way more fire bats than usual uh and the use utilizing them to great uh extent here to just crush through all these like low numbers of zerg units he is going to be pushed back here for now but again Hero on three gas. Now it's past 21 minute mark. It's 22.30. We are mined out on both the main and natural gas for sure at this point. Yeah, I mean, Hero's dead. We we did eventually make that ultra dead, but I mean, you see in the supply, 55 supply, he's kind of on the brink of death at this point. A few Defiler going down here as well, and I, I feel like we're just a few moments away from being able to break through and finish this game. Yeah, Sharp's played an amazing scrappy game here. He's continuing to fight just small groups of Hydras with small groups of Marines, but he's putting together that big force with so much economy here uh, rolling along. He's going to be able to eventually overwhelm the position no matter really what Hero does at this point. It's kind of a victory lap here right now for Sharp. There it is. GG. Hero taps out Sharp. Continues his rampage. Sharp, our Terran savior. Is he going to beat everybody tonight? He's looking at that all kill prize. He's licking his lips right now. He gets the <laughs> clapper from KCM once again, dude. This guy on fire. Give it up for Sharp in the comments, guys. We're going to jump into our next game. The final boss of Protoss. Snow here down in the bottom left hand corner. Sharp in the top center now. We are one game away from an all-kill for Sharp. But we're also three games away from an all-kill for Snow. So it could go either way. <laughs> yeah, this this is the one game that I'm really scared for for Sharp is Snow. And there is, like, a legitimate good chance that Snow reverse, like, all-kills the Terrans here. Yeah, yeah, it's not a joke, guys. <laughs> we... This is Snow's moment right here. It's all been lined up for him, right? Each week, there's like a really good chance of Snow all killing if it weren't for the Zergs, right? They've all been eliminated here. It's just Snow and three Terrans. Um, odds are he can take them all out. Let's see what he decides to pull out here. He did some weird stuff last uh, week. He went for, you know, Reaverless builds or very, very late, late Reaver builds and didn't really work out. Um... Maybe he's experimenting with some new stuff. Let's see what he does Does here. Yeah. I'm sure you guys have noticed by now, I don't watch a whole lot of pro playing, uh, but as a former Protoss player, 
everybody that plays Protoss knows to watch Snow if you want to learn PvT. So, yeah, I'm, I'm always really excited to see us play it. I'll, I'll be honest with you, though. When I saw some of Snow's Reaver Micro, it's actually what inspired me to quit Protoss because I knew I would never be able to accomplish that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's... Uh... It's really, truly next level. His probe micro is insane as well, as we're going to see here shortly. He's able to pull more SCVs off of the mineral line than I've, I think I've seen anyone else uh, able to do. You know, Bisu is the one who's really known for probe micro um, traditionally, but Snow is just so good at it. Uh, at this point, I feel like he's the, the figurehead of Protoss. Yeah, he's, he's so aggressive with this probe, actually, like, trading. Uh, I try to go, oh. but it, it never looks so nice. Oh, nice. Kill already from Snow, yeah. Dude, are you kidding me? Oh, man. What the hell? How did he manage to get that with... I mean, he wasn't even... Didn't even get the first scout. He gets in there just as the Marine is in production, and he manages to take out an SCV. That is wild to me. Um, yeah, yeah, Sharp gotta be feeling good. Sharp gotta be feeling bad about that, and he's gonna lose his, his SCV here too. No, okay, Snow wasn't paying attention. To I that. intercepted here with the probe coming back though. Probably, yeah, most likely he's chasing it with one probe. He's gonna catch it with the other. Here we go. Okay, he he does turn there. A little bit of cat and mouse back and forth here. Sharp gonna lose that SCV. So two kills on this probe goes home victorious. He'll spend the rest of his life in this mining colony. Just uh, sucking yeah. up resources, telling the stories of his adventures <laughs> over there in the Terran base and the scalps that he took home for the Protoss. Yeah, th this hurts so much for Sharp because, it, yes, it's two SCV kills, but you actually cancel an SCV to get your factory whenever you're being probe scouted, so I'm pretty sure he's down three SCVs after this. This is so rough, but Sharp, he's been showing some brilliance in his play. Can he find a way to take down Snow here? It's not looking good, but it's definitely not over. Sharp going to grab his command center here in a moment. And we're going to get into a pretty normal game from this position, albeit with a little slight advantage here for Snow. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to mention about the probe that he did, that it's just like little things that can add up, especially at the highest levels. But with that probe, yes, he got the SCV kill, but he also tapped another SCV twice, knocking it down to 50 HP. These are just like little things you can do that could pay off later. I mean, those two hits is one less Dragoon hit, right? So if you ever get into a situation where you were like fighting with Dragoons against the SCVs, then there's just one less shot on that SCV if it ever comes into play. So just looking for like all these little tiny bits of damage that he could fit in there. That is, uh, that is ridiculous to be thinking about in the in the moment, but that's just the level that Snow is at. He's just the galaxy brain Protoss. Um, get a push here, actually. It does look that way. Sharp gonna go for this probing push with four Marines and two tanks. Uh, it looks like a Vulture follow-up as well. Does he have a third tank trailing behind this? Usually you do push this with third three tanks. Uh, yeah, you don't Marines. see with two tanks. I think that's a Marine. Yeah, it's a hmm. Marine and a Vulture coming in behind this. Two tanks. A little bit interesting. But Snow doesn't have much here right now. Like, it's only two Dragoons and a Zealot. He actually could be in a lot of danger here. Yeah, this is a little scary. He's going to have to buy some time for a fourth Dragoon to pop out. He's diving forward, trying to get some shots onto that tank. Um, we'll pick off some of these Marines. The Zealot does go down as well. I didn't really see the Zealot get any hits off there. Uh, mines are now getting set up. The probes are going to surround... Oh, this is a great surround right here. He's going to get a tank with the probes right now. Citizen's Arrest takes that out. Uh, big mine connection there, but the tank goes down. Just a couple of Dragoons lost, and dude, Snow wow. hangs on. That's crazy. That looked like it was going to be so much worse, but like you said, Citizen's Arrest, those probes doing absolute work on those tanks. Uh, I actually felt like the workers on both sides did the most damage because an SCD actually killed a Dragoon on the backside as well. Workers coming in clutch here, but <laughs> Snow deflecting that attack. It wasn't an attack that was meant to kill, truly. It was more of a probing hit, and... Dude, 2 HP on that. He shouldn't really go for the kill. Wait, can he get it? 
Oh, trades one vulture for one dragoon. Hey, that's worth. Yeah, it's funny. Instead of just seeing that he could kill it and coming straight in, these are just like the little things, right? Sharp is like, well, I have one more mine left. Let me put that down before I run in there and die. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can't wait too long because if the, the shields regenerate just a couple more points, you wouldn't have been able to get that. Really small calculations there made on both sides, but it works out for Sharp. He's going to start to lay down mines at some of these expansion outlying locations. And Snow, meanwhile, going to push across the map, clear out mines to make sure that he's got a presence in front of the Terran base. I mean, a lot of craziness has gone on already in this game. Uh, but things are starting to normalize here. Yeah, I don't hate it from Sharp, right? Like, it was a little bit of a bad start for him losing those three SCVs. Or, the, I guess, losing two and cutting one. Um, so trying to create a little bit of chaos. And, and he really did have a lot of potential with that push. But is this a really good reaction from Snow with the workers? But, uh, yeah, I, I just like the thought process. Like, you don't want to get into, like, a, a standard game state, I feel like, with Snow when he's got his Reavers and stuff coming into play. For sure. Well, the Reavers are going to make their way over here now. This is a tough map to defend Reavers. as well. There's so much, there's so much surface area for the Reaver to come in. We're trying to build the bare minimum of turrets right now because ringing this base is going to be very, very tough. Um, tank in the front is going to deter the, the Reaver from just hitting that bunker and opening up the position at least, but he could dive in here once again. He's actually going to go for this. Tank going to be hit by that Reaver, and he will go after the, the bunker here now. Ooh, keeping the Reaver on the ground, actually taking a hit from the tank, or a bit of splash at least, does pick off that bunker, will open up this position. Now Snow has found a way into the base here. Sharp in a little bit of panic mode, trying to throw down some extra turrets at the front, sieging up all the tanks, but I think we're going to move around now. Snow going to find another location he can dive into. Yeah, one thing about Apocalypse, it, it's actually so hard to defend against anything from the air on this map for Terran. There's so much dead space around your naturals. Uh, you can't get a turret ring like you pointed out. Like, you need so many turrets you're going to go for a turret ring. So Snow looking to abuse just the map a little bit. Uh, but there is still pretty decent turret placement from Sharp, specifically on this side. So we actually can't get any damage done. I, I really like it. Yeah, it's doing a pretty great job here, holding on against what is the best reaver control in the world uh, snow not finding any huge damage here he's slowed down sharp just incrementally little bit by little bit picking off tanks uh, so far he's killed three of those so that's gonna slow down the push whenever it decides to come but sharp slowing down the fourth base he kills the probe heading over there and he's killed a few dragoons here and there he's lowered the hp on that shuttle let's see if he can finish it off or whether Snow is going to be able to get more damage with this this uh, key unit here. One more tank going to fall. Diving on top of the... Oh, it's so close. One more shot there. Would have killed that. Can he get it? Target, target. He does not target that shuttle. The shuttle goes down. Or the shuttle does not go down. The Goliaths go down. Looks like the Reaver will finally be targeted. No. Ten kills on this Reaver and it's still pushing forward. There we go. That was so much work that that yeah. reaver put in kind of crazy what sharp uh, what what uh, snow can do with that it it's it is insane it looked like a situation where snow was it just looked bad for him to go in there and attack but then he just makes it look like you should always attack into siege lines that's pretty insane rolling the dice here let's see if we can get a big hit not quite able to get that um that is really an art, an art form that Snow's kind of mastered is placing the Reaver in the right spot and uh, targeting the right SCV to make that Scarab connect. But good pullback there from Sharp. He keeps his SCVs alive. Uh, he's thinking about taking the third base right now, but with this much pressure that's gone on this game, 11 minute third base seems a little bit out of reach right now. Yeah, I will say one thing that Sharp is doing that is incredibly impressive is despite all the pressure that Snow is throwing on him, he is still consistently getting vultures down to this bottom side and denying this fourth base over and over and over again. So if he can get a third going and just kind of chill out, he's actually in a good spot, like unironically, eco-wise. 
Well, he may end up losing another tank here. Looks like that's going to fall back. He does get into a position where he could potentially take this third. And he, again, like you said, has that vulture. Cans are stopping the base down here. Look at that. Dude, this is actually going to save Sharp in this game, potentially. That might be the thing that, that keeps him alive here. Yeah, if Snow was able to take this fourth when he wanted to, that was like three or four minutes ago now. Like, mm -hmm. the game would be unplayable for Sharp, if that, because that'd be up and mining for a while. But instead, we still are only just now ready to get our Nexus thrown down. I think, I, I think that's a problem down there. I think so. There it is. The Nexus does drop. And, uh, I mean, Sharp's delayed this for, like, four minutes at this point. So he is going to be turtling up now on three bases and building into that late game army from not too bad of a position here. It's still a little, uh, you know, tentative here. Everything's been slowed down quite a bit, but I think he is gonna be okay with that his upgrades are on the way he should be able to get ahead uh, and up to that 2-1 timing attack when he uh, wants to here yeah with that play he basically turned it from a game over into a playable game like you said he's, he's still not in a good position but this is a playable position uh i will say for this map though getting to three bases turn is easy getting out of your base after that in this matchup can be really really hard it, these ramps coming up is, it's so difficult to push through especially when they're playing reaver oh the defensive position here for sharp is so good as snow thinks about flying into the main i think that sharp just has him like He's got him nailed. He knows He knows what Snow likes to do. He's just going to target down the shuttle so fast. That goes down immediately. The mines are going to connect on the, uh, the, t the two zealots here. And he's going to get the shuttle. He gets the shuttle and the tanks are in oh, range man. to hit these reavers. This is the best cleanup I think I've ever seen of one of uh, Snow's big drops. Like the mid-game drop there. That was really, really well done. Dude, Sharp is looking so good right now. Like, this has been non-stop pressure from Snow and pretty good trades from him, but Sharp's just... just kind of, like... He's just flowing with it. Like, he's he's been able to deflect a lot of this and, and not take too much damage. We're, we're only down 20 supply right now with a pretty big army coming up this ramp. Pretty much uncontested. This is crazy. Sharp moving across with a 130 supply army. I hope he's not planning to go all the way in for an attack right now. Taking his own high ground is great, but you know, coming across here and trying to take a big fight with Snow might be a bit of an overextension. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want him to get too aggressive here. We did bleed off a few vultures, but not too bad, but he's posturing like he really wants to go. And I don't see an expansion or anything on the way right now. No, he's taking a big position here in the middle of the map. A big storm goes down, but I think that shuttle just died, and uh, the storm was definitely not on the clumps of tanks here. Ooh, big mine connection Ooh. there, getting dragged in to those tanks, but a lot of them are still standing. And the Dragoons have to back away. Is Sharp going to be able to claim this high ground here? A position that's very, very hard to break for uh, a Protoss player. Yeah, a lot of Zealots coming in, but he gets his minefield set up relatively well. It does clean it up with the Zealots decently, but bled off a lot of them. Lost his high Templar before he got the Storm as well. Storm coming down on the tanks now, cleaning up a bunch of the vultures, but Snow continuing to get pushed back. And like you said, I think Sharp is going to get this high ground now. Oh and my he, god. How? If he gets control here, he can pivot to the fourth phase very easily. This is unbelievable. Sharp, where was this gameplay in ASL 17, man? This is insane. He's playing so well today. Sharp is just dominating right now. Snow with that attack. That, I mean, it, that I didn't think that could even possibly happen. But, uh, you know, you heard me say that he should be maybe thinking about backing up or, you know, holding the, his own high ground. He is not content with that at all. He's going to push in and, I mean, possibly overextend here. But he's just making it look so good. Yeah, it's 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 close. Like honestly, it's close to being broke, but not quite good enough from Snow. Uh, he has a decent army here on the bottom side. We are sieging up now, kind of getting pushing towards his third base here. I'm a little bit worried about the mines that we're sitting on. Yeah. I think this tank on the right side is like, yeah, there's a mine right underneath these Goliath. A little bit scary with the zealot bombs and stuff coming in. Is this we're throwing turrets down now? 
Yeah, crazy. But he's gonna try and run around this. It looks like Snow not ready to break out just yet. Wants to move around this army, try to create another threat on the map, maybe get in the way of some of these rallies. But Sharp is really making it hard for him. He's not gonna allow all the Goliaths and Zealots to make their way out. He forces a trade there. Lowers that count. Reaver's gonna move forward. Get lost. Dude, he's losing his Reavers in the late game right now. Snow out of character here. Losing those units. Oh, the mine connection there on the Templar is huge as well. Stopping the storms. Only one manages to get out. And we've got plenty of vultures here to fight on the high ground. He's just going to hold this position. Dude, that mine almost went off. That would have been scary. But Sharp holds the high ground here. Snow does prevent his third base from going down here. So he's still got a lot of play going on. He is going to catch some of these reinforcements as well. But there's not enough units anymore to be a real threat. Sharp. Losing tanks over the left-hand side. It's such a breakable position at this point, but he's just not quite able to break out of these cuffs right now. Yeah, if he breaks this, though, the game's kind of over. Sharp still hasn't taken a fourth base. His, his main is mined out, so it's going to start slowing down a little bit. And whereas Snow is just kind of coming over and over and over again, we're, we're slowly whittling away at this. And like I said, Sharp's not expanded behind us. And I think Snow is... Finally starting to break through here. Ah, yeah, you're totally right. No fourth base here. Sharp does not have a long-term plan. His attack was meant to kill, and Snow has more bases coming up. He's finally mining over there at the center, right? So he wasn't really mining off of five bases just yet, but... I mean, it's better than what Sharp has here with just two bases mining. It's very, very tough to field a large enough army to take on what Snow can produce. He's still mining in the main natural, his third and fourth. Now with the fifth base coming online, his economy is going to get really out of control here. A great mine connection there. Um, looking for some damage. This is where Sharp, uh, you know, tries to find his way back in is with the mines and the vultures. Uh, that's typically where he makes up the, the deficits, but these are all getting tracked down. They're getting cornered, and Sharp is just running out of steam here. Yeah, and one thing the observers pointed out, too, that is huge is that Sharp is on 1-1, one, one and he doesn't have a star port. He, he really was just all in on this three base push. There, there is no late game. We're just now finishing our star port. Well, that's so rough. I guess a fourth base will finally come out here now. Uh, he's going to sit set up on this high ground out front of his natural and try to make that play work, which, I mean, it could have worked wonders here uh, if he'd gone for this, uh, you know, a few minutes ago when he, uh, he instead went for that big attack across the map. He kind of phased himself out of this late game style, and now he's trying to get back into it, and I don't think that Snow's going to allow him uh, to, to play that long game out anymore. Yeah, it was so close to breaking snow, but yeah, like like we said, he just kind of ran out of steam, and now we're getting harassed by these reavers. I mean, we're at 20 minutes, and snow's still making reavers and dropping. Like, he just never stops with his reavers, man, and he's always getting damage with them. Yeah, getting a tank so here. Vulture here, tank there. Just getting value constantly throughout this game. Sharp, for his part, doing a pretty decent job holding that off. It's not like he's losing buildings and supply depots and all that. He's just bleeding off a few vultures here and there, a couple of tanks. But he is, you know, starting to gear up to that next level. He's starting to go into that late game. The problem is, though, that Snow just has so much money. He has so much income here. It's crazy. He's completely maxed out. He can start adding on a buttload of gateways down in the bottom right as well and continue these drop harassments over and over and over again some storms gonna come out just getting the tail end of that uh, scv transfer we'll get a nice storm there on some of these uh, units that are coming to assist as well uh, he won't break this base just yet but that was some great damage here for snow yeah, this is actually what I was talking about in that first game, or the, maybe not the first game, the Radeon game with a Bisu. Is once you're maxed with Protoss and you got your shuttles, like you saw with Sharp, he's getting close to max. He's probably get, feel, feeling pretty strong, you know, when you're maxing out with your mech army. And then the shuttles come in and make you like trade off army and 
you start getting whittled down like that, whereas the Protoss is just mining, staying maxed, and yeah, it's, it becomes very hard to get aggressive once you're reaching that point of the game. Another two Reavers coming up here to assist, to start to break up these chunks of army, the groups of army like Vultures and uh, the Goliaths, they just stack up so much, they really clump. Uh, well, so they're so good for the Reavers that deal that splash damage. Sharp fighting down from high ground here, bleeding off a lot of army, like you were saying, and uh, really barely holding on to this fourth base right now as he's trying to get his upgrades going, trying to get towards that max out, but Snow is just taking more and more and more of the map and making it harder and harder. Again, with the drop here, he's going to oh, kill annoying. so many SCVs. 11 kills, 13 kills now, 9 on this one. Yeah, it's super annoying, but it's just so snow. This is exactly the way that he plays, and it's incredibly difficult to deal with. Yeah, it's just non-stop value, and it's kind of what I said earlier, right? Like, Sharp was maxed earlier, and like getting ready to push. Snow attacked him with like 60 supply and killed like 100 supply of Sharp. It's, it's just really technical army with the Storms and the Reavers, and just so efficient from Snow. It's unreal, and... He's just taking advantage of this map, like you were saying. It's so hard to get a fourth here. It's, you have to spread out your units so much. Um, this big army here in the middle. Oh, the storms are massive right there on top of this chunk. There's just no vultures here to uh, help this army. So the zealots get on top of everything. The unseaged tanks actually win the day, but a huge chunk of army got killed, and he's down below 100 supply. Yeah, and he's barely mining right now. We, we basically got a, a base and a quarter. Uh, he's going to clean up these goons and stuff. But, yeah, like you said, we're down below 100 supply. Going to put pressure on this base, but, I mean, just look at the many maps. Snow has so much map right now. So much income. Sharp is scrambling to get just a few more units to be able to try and push. But, yeah, Snow's going to remax, and I, and I feel like he's just going to run this over, and that could just be GG. Sharp spamming out pure vulture here. He's trying to put together an army that can buffer for these tanks here. Uh, heading over to the top right. He's got a few Goliaths in the mix, so he could snipe down some uh, some shuttles here. Uh, he does hold on to the fourth, but I feel like Snow is just gathering his supply right now. 191. He's got 70 supply advantage to work with. He should be able to take out this army of Sharp while breaking the base over here at the center left. At the same time, great storms, some Reavers in here as well. These are such valuable shuttles here. So many <laughs> units in there. So many high quality units in there. Tons of Templar and two Reavers. That's some very expensive drop, but it's getting a huge amount of value. Yeah, and he's going to be able to clean up this push eventually with just the reinforcements from its own own gateways in its base. And with that base going down, I mean, Sharp has, what, two mineral patches or something like that. I mean, you put up a good fight. There were a few moments where I really thought he was going to be able to pull it off, but GG is called, and Snow is going to stop the, uh, the rampage of Sharp. The reverse all kill begins. Guys, we've got two more players in the pocket. Ken... One of these two Terrans shut down Snow. Is he going to take another all kill here? He's got his eyes on the prize going into our next game. Let's jump right in. Rush going to be sent out here versus Snow. I think this is um, this is poetic here to send out Royal last. Because last week we saw royal take down snow on citadel um maybe not the best showing from snow there but he is really on it right now uh and i'm looking forward to that final showdown if we manage to take down rush here but troy is a crazy map a lot of things can happen let's see what rush has for us looks like we're already planning on some abuse here from snow not gonna be like hidden gateways like you normally see but i think it's gonna be a forward nine nine you're just talking Maybe. about this, how so many players do this on the ladder. Yeah. I, I thought maybe he was going to do it at 3 o'clock, uh, his gateways, with mm -hmm. how early he's in the pro, but we stopped at the natural, so... Just okay, one just gate so far. One gate. Hmm. Yeah. 
It is a 9 gain instead of a 10 gain, so he is planning on getting aggressive, but normally, like when you're seeing like aggressive gateways on this map, it's because you're looking to kill the assimilators and trap the Terran in, right? Yeah. Uh, but this, this won't be able to do that. It's just going to be zealot pressure, and that's it. Well, Rush is definitely not going to go like fast expand or gas as fast expand because he knows how strong something like a 9-9 gate can be. Instead, he's just going to get into a pretty fast factory here and have some some meat to defend whatever is coming, whatever sort of aggression comes out of snow and take a normal uh, natural base. So uh, what kind of damage can this get done? Cross map? It's going to be pretty hard to really do anything against Rush here. Yeah, I, I actually don't like this. Like, I, I don't know if maybe I'm missing something, but a, a four nine gate that's gonna play like maybe two zealots. I, I don't think I like it that much. I mean, we'll see what ends up getting done. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, what do you just spend money on? Do you make another gateway? Oh, what's oh a sniper core? Sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> I thought we were doing something weird. Don't mind me. Snow says that this uh, SCV is not allowed to go out on the map. He blocks it there, just denying the scouting by just fully not allowing the SCV to get out of the base. But uh, with this oh, denial of the scout, um, the Zealot could slip in here, but the factor is almost done. It's just it, this doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, with the nine gate here. So what he's planning on doing mm -hmm. is preventing the bunker. That's the whole point here. So he tucked the zealot and he's going to come in with a second zealot and a goon behind this pretty early. And his whole goal is to stop the bunker from mm. coming up with a natural. Right, that makes sense. So he's going to keep the zealots active here in the front. Make sure that the SCV doesn't come out for the bunker and hope to get the dragoon in. So that the there's since there's no bunker, he won't be able to just easily defend. He'll have to fight with SCVs and vultures and marines against that first dragoon, and he's gonna start to deal some free damage here with the vulture onto this zealot, which is kind of a hole in this build here. There's not really a lot of things that Snow can do right now to prevent that from happening. He loses the vult or he loses the zealot right away. Um, Zealot Dragoon is going to come straight up here. Rush is going to send the Vulture right across the map, and maybe he can slip by. Will the Dragoon pop out in time to save that? I think it just popped out right now, and he's getting right on top of these Marines. This is great from Snow. He's doing so much damage right here. Yeah, th this was the whole goal right here, right? And another Vulture comes out. I guess the Vulture did actually slip into the main. I think that might be the SCV. Yeah. The SCV, sorry. Yeah, the Vulture got <laughs> denied at the natural, I think. Oh, okay, okay, my bad. That's unfortunate. Oh, we have a start port early from Rush, so it's not even going to be a CC here. Did Snow see that? I don't think so, but Snow sees a bunch of SCVs being pulled here to try and defend, and he just doesn't have the bunker, man. The bunker mm -hmm. um, on the high ground would prevent snow from getting up there to see that there's no cc but he just can't do that right now uh he's gonna make a drop ship and try to go across the map but as long as snow plays defensively right now knowing that he's already ahead uh, I, I just I, I just don't think that this can do anything uh snow actually opting not to mine much gas right now i think we only had one on gas for a while and yeah, we just recently fixed it again so he's been optimizing his mineral mining a little bit. He's got the robo down now, but no observatory. This can still do a lot of damage, the, the drop into the main. If uh, we have vulture speed or mines, it could be a bit chaotic. But just with the, the positioning here of Snow, recognizing his spot, realizing that the only thing that could really hurt him now is some sort of drop or some sort of economic damage like a push is not going to kill him right now he doesn't have to worry about a push he just has to worry about vulture slipping in somewhere so spreading the dragoons everywhere he's going to catch this as it comes in and the vultures are just going to start to lay down mines they do not have speed uh, they have those mines some of them are going to connect but most of these vultures are just going to get shut down immediately great placement with the pylon blocking them out and 
Can't make it into the natural oh. either. Perfect hold here by Snow. GG is called. I like it. I like it a lot. So yeah, I saw the nine gate and I even said it right. I was like, I don't like it, but maybe he'll show me something. And sure enough, it, I realized eventually what he was doing when he tucked that zealot, what the game plan was. I, I really, really like this play. And then just perfect defense to follow it up after. Final game of the night here. Royal versus Snow. This is the exact map that Royal beat Snow on last week. So getting a chance at revenge here and a chance at an all-kill prize. Snow, he's on fire. Can he finish things off strong here in this last game? I think this is going to be a great fight. A difficult map, though, you were saying, uh, in this matchup, Citadel. Yeah, this is probably one of the hardest pvt maps in a long time um the the closest thing like the most recently the only map that was like kind of terran favored was vermeer and this map is many times better for terran than protoss and i kind of alluded to it earlier but it's it's all these walls that the tanks can shoot around that make it such a good terran map and getting up to four base for terran is not that hard in this map either there's a lot of lanes and high ground positions that you can hold to shut down those lanes um you can siege up tanks next to the walls to hold those lanes as well i understand exactly what you're talking about but uh the the stats i don't know if they reflect like a real terran advantage here i feel like we've seen a lot of uh, protoss victories here but maybe i'm wrong about that um oh i just wanted to say Ozzy, thank you for filling in for Shun today. Guys, everybody, before we go, before we end this stream here, go take a look uh, at the description. Go check out Ozzy. I'll put some of his links down there. Uh, does YouTube videos, um, some casting content and that type of thing. Um, gameplay and uh, some learning stuff as well. Some teaching um, for how to play Brood War. So check that out. Uh, definitely appreciate you coming out and, and staying up late for the cast. Yeah, no problem. I, I really enjoy this kind of stuff, so I, I'm glad you asked me to come. Thank you for the invite. We are getting a 15cc again. Uh, it's, it's interesting that Terrans on this map both times went for 15cc, right? Um, one thing I was going to say about this map too is it is Terran favored. And because of the way the walls and stuff are set up, it, like I said earlier, it does lend itself towards um, shuttle style. And obviously, Snow is a big fan of that style, so he might be able to adapt to this map relatively well. Well, the position is looking good here. Royal is just going to get scouted now, so he doesn't have to deal with that super annoying probe early game. Snow just going to bail out. And... Uh, not take any of that tax, that Protoss tax, um, by just like harassing these SCVs. Looks like he is gonna track down the SCV heading out on the map, try to get some hits on it. But since it's already taken some damage from the Marines here, I think we're all gonna be able to slip out no problem. Okay, now let's see how Snow reacts to this build. Um, he did kind of confirm it. You can kind of tell by the barracks placement. He didn't necessarily see it, but based on the barracks and like bunker and stuff, I, I think he can more or less tell. I, I don't think he saw the CC. Maybe he did. And yeah, he's opting for a, a quick second gateway, and he went 22 Nexus. So I think he's planning on getting much more aggressive with the Dragoons. And one thing is, you did mention before about how Vultures are really good against this because of uh, the late robo, typically. Mm -hmm. But the counter to that is just having a bunch of goons at the front of his base early to prevent them from getting out in the first place. Right. Uh, I, I was saying about the the Nexus first. When you go Nexus first, oh, Nexus you have first. a lot sorry, less sorry, sorry. Uh, observers. But yeah, the same sort of principle applies here as well. If you're going to be pumping out a huge amount of dragoons to put that pressure on early, you can prevent those vultures from getting out and laying down those mines in the first place which is the best of both worlds uh, he will be <laughs> it's totally fine uh, we are approaching the end here gonna get some sleep going very very soon oh my god look at this probe micro are you kidding me 
What even is that? He's going to block the natural year as well. Not allow the SCV to get in. Getting that Protoss tax going now. He wasn't able to get it earlier with the probe. He's going to uh, take that toll though now with these Dragoons here at the front. Getting his third base going in just a moment's time right now. I, I feel like his response uh, to the play here from Royal just light years better than what we saw at a Stork on the same map. Yeah, I agree completely. And we actually need to yeah, hurry and get a fourth SCV here. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Snow just went straight for the second gate for exactly this. He's going to try and put a little bit of pressure on that tank. You want to try and chase the tank back and continue getting volleys on the bunker as much as possible without taking too much damage on the uh, Dragoons here. Dude, this micro is insane. Look at it. Look at how quickly he's able to pull out of the range of the bunker and still hit the bunker. That's so hard to do. It's Snow's making it look easy. That was really, really impressive stuff from Snow. He doesn't get the tank or anything because Royal was quick enough on the pullback, but that was really, really impressive stuff from Snow. He does take some hit point damage on those Dragoons, but giving himself the opportunity to get a kill like that and dealing that extra damage to the bunker and forcing out the extra repair. I, I feel like he's just in the zone right now. He's right in the moment here playing this, this set out. Yeah, one thing you have to worry about against the 15cc as Protoss is the timing that can come up behind that can be really, really scary because it, it hits pretty hard pretty fast as you're taking your third base. Um, but he does have this high ground position to try and snipe off some tanks as it comes in here. Oh, it looks like he wasn't quite prepared for that. He kind of, like, juggled his Dragoons back and forth for a moment. Um, kind of taking control of them as the push was coming out. So he didn't have, you know, everything on a hotkey already and his screen at the right position at that time so that he could try and, t you know, dive on top of one of those tanks, which was the opportunity he was looking for. Uh, but he doesn't take too much damage. He kind of picks off a few... Uh, you know, forward units, vultures, yeah. marines, that type of thing, and backs off without losing too much. So he's going to be okay here. But Roll is now unleashed on the map, and he's starting to put down mines everywhere, tracking where Snow's going to be taking this fourth base. Yeah, really good defensive gun positioning from Snow, though, not to take any damage. And yeah, like you said, he only bled off one Dragoon and killed a few of the vultures, so it actually turned out okay for Snow. It could have been pretty scary, but yeah, it went out okay with him, for him. And yeah, we're just set up defensively. We've got a six minute third before we got our robo up. So he actually managed to equalize uh, the opening pretty easily. Making it look easy, but I tell you, it's not. This guy, not crazy, crazy good. Even from a bad position, he is such a danger. Robotics support bait is done now. So those Reavers are going to start to hit the field here really, really soon. You can see Royal with a lot of his army in the main. He's kind of prepared for that already. He's not pushed out and sieged up at the front here. He knows that the real danger is when this drop starts to come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Snow already reached his late game potential here. We have our uh, shuttles and Reavers on the way. And that, it feels like that's all he needs to beat a pro, uh, Terran for an entire game. Uh, he just never stops producing those units. Now, one thing yeah. to talk about this third base, and maybe this is one of the reasons uh, why Terran is more favored on this map, is that you can't really protect your probes with the pylon wall here at this third. Yeah, that's definitely hard. You need some cannons there or something. You, you just the, the the vultures can get too close to the mineral patches, and you can just you just start to pick off probes there. So. That's a bit dangerous. You gotta keep some dragoons around that area. Yeah, for sure. He's trying to get this nine o'clock base, but Royal killing the probe and before the wall goes up as well. Scans and kills this observer here. And it looks like he's gonna try and take an on location third, possibly. And yeah, you see here, like while the while this mineral only base is open and it seems like it'd be hard for Terran to defend. You see all these tanks behind the wall can defend the base very, very easily. And you also have that ramp, like if you use the uphill part of the ramp. So, yes, there's this big open space, but it's still very hard for Protoss to attack into it when, when Terran is set up defensively. 
Terrence starting oh, so I guess to move I'm not, like, pushing, yeah. Oh, Ooh, I'm surprised to see this push. Laying the mines behind the Dragoons, a great move here, but the Reaver drops down and actually clears out a lot of those Vultures. Excellent hold there by Snow, only losing a couple of Dragoons and picking off quite a few Vultures. It's not going to be easy for him to keep pushing forward with no Vultures here to back this up. We've got the Shuttle. We should have some Zealots popping out here in a moment as well. And uh, it's going to be tough for Roll to push through. He's actually going to change directions now, head towards the, the natural through this path. And this path is quite tight. It's difficult to get on top of this army right now or get a nice spread here of Dragoons coming in to fight this tank army. So Snow in a bit of a pickle here. Let's see what he can do against this. Yeah, Roll has been doing a good job of shooing the Observers away as well. So Snow can't get as much value out of his Reaver as he wants to. He's, he's trying to kind of guess where the tanks are going to be pushing up uh, without the vision there. So it's allowing Roll to push a little bit quicker. He's going to get... No, not quite getting this one tank yet. And this push is still pretty scary from Royal. The goon count's really high, and like you said, we, we don't have a lot of zealots. He's making the zealots now, and it looks like we don't have leg speed yet either, so... But I love this play right here, getting goons between the rally. So this not only stops the reinforcements, but allows you to set up a flank. Yeah, he's uh, shutting down that reinforcement pathway. Royal has to fight the army here with what he's got at the front right now. Um, one more tank is coming out here, trying to push back these goons, but he might end up losing that for free. Uh, as another tank comes up and the vultures start to lay down their mines, he will have to retreat. Uh, looks like he might end up losing these Dragoons, actually. Some good control right now, but there's a lot going on uh, on the map. He can't afford to pay attention to this full time. He's got to be you know, macroing out all these Zealots and getting prepared for this bust. He has to bust out now before more reinforcements arrive at this position. Here we go. Sending out the Zealots. The Reavers are going to take some shots. Can he actually break this position? Another wave of Zealots coming right at the right time. He targets the Reavers, though. All the Reavers get targeted at perfect time there. Royal holds for now, and the Dragoons coming in are just not going to be enough to break this. Snow's in a lot of trouble right now. His supply is not looking good, and Royal is just, he's in position right now. We're, we're sieging up, we're putting pressure on the natural. Like, Snow has to beat this back now, and he's, he's down in supply. Oh, and he loses the Reaver shuttle too. Oh man, it's so bad. The Dragoons are going to come in once again as the tanks on siege, but the moment they siege up again, he has to leave. Uh, another round of Zealots is going to come out in just a few seconds, but more and more Vultures are making their way up here, and the tank count is still strong. We don't have a Reaver to try and clear those out, and he's hitting the third base already. Dude, this is so well played by Royal, and it feels like Snow just cannot take this man down on this map. Yeah, I, I thought it was actually looking pretty good for Snow, but one of the big things, like I said, Royal keeping those observers away so the Snow could not get value with his Reavers and, and slow this push down. Like, Royal pushed through this little block, like this area, so quickly. And yeah, GG is called. Wow, Royal shuts him down. No all kill tonight for either squad. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Ozzy had to hit the hay. He's gone to bed, so it's just me here taking a look at this point ranking. Protoss managing to take that top spot, but just barely. It really seemed like they were going to dominate this season. But with Zerg getting completely beaten down, the whipping boy here for the three races, Terran actually returning fire and almost getting back up to that top spot really really close thing here but Protoss will go on to that finals and we're gonna have the TVZ semi-finals which I am not unhappy about that's gonna be a ton of fun guys thank you so much for watching thank you to Ozzy for joining in for subbing in uh, I think he did a really good job here let me know in the comments below what you guys thought let me know what you think was the best game this week as well Sharp putting on so many great games here and snow as well just the two big stars of the show here they did so fantastic cannot wait to see their performance uh, in the finals i think they were probably going to see a terran versus protoss finals but you never know semi-finals is chaotic as heck sometimes the third place team comes back oftentimes takes away that place gets into the finals and 
even has an opportunity to take the, the finals as well. You never know what can happen in KCM. That's what makes it so fun. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week.